Welcome to the Mentality Metaverse. We seek to move the whole self in, through, and beyond the present state of things. Join us on our mission to make a metaverse that's safe, creative, and geared to ever-evolving good. Mentality Metaverse provides AR, VR, XR, and more to benefit everyone in our present reality. Besides, why be better at games when we can better overall? Mentality Metaverse to bring out your best. So Dr. Vital Bias, many company, pharma, um, mining, banks. Uh, Dr. Alex, now can you uh, uh, start with a little bit? On... The collaboration started with VR. And I have a picture very early, over five years ago, uh, Dr. Vital Bias testing out uh, a VR in, in our lab. Uh, he's standing there and, and uh, using the VR and trying to see as a, as, a, as a neurosurgeon how the virtual reality can be applied. Um, and this was a HTC Vive. Uh, and I have a, a small photo of him doing that along with the other investors. They were uh, coming in and looking at the application of uh, VR. Um, and we also in the same uh, place, we were looking at uh, Bitcoin mining hardware to see you know, how this new technology is evolving. And he has always been at the forefront of uh, investing and funding for new emerging technologies that touch humanity. He's always, what problem are you solving? And, and are you solving the hard problem, right? As a, as a neurosurgeon, his, his, his his mindset is different. He, he is solving the hard problems. We are very honored to have Dr. Vitalbhai today with us uh, when this new, very emerging concept of metaverse is being pushed into the world. And whose playground is the metaverse? The metaverse is the playground of the mind. And a neurosurgeon is the guardian of the mind. And that makes it, uh, that makes his vision, the center of all this, and to also be very careful about the abuse of the mind in the metaverse. And so uh, we would like to hear about that. And also as a, as, a, as a pioneer in going and investing in coal mines and, and trying to make it eco-friendly. And, and so we want to hear his, his future prophecy on mining in another planet and doing some work in another planet and how this interplanetary uh, idea comes about. So we are uh, excited to hear that prophecy and also um, talk about the present and the future and also talk about real, virtual and artificial because the mind is going to get confused between the three and how to survive that three different concepts, that three different systems, if you want to call it. So um, Dr. J, uh, go ahead and give him um, your take on the metaverse, and then we will have Dr. Vital Bhai, um present his. Go ahead. Dr. Vital, pleasure to meet you by Thank way you. of this medium. <laughs> uh, I hope to meet you in person one day. And um, I'm very, very impressed with um, all that you do and uh, in, in the many disciplines that you, uh, that you aid and assist in, especially neurosurgery. Um, the take on the metaverse mentality, mentality metaverse and, and the way it, it applies is the first universe is the universe of the mind that still is uh, in need of much exploration. There's many mysteries of the mind the brain is one thing. The mind, uh, again, is like a layer cake on top of it that encompasses so much of the, uh, of the human experience. And I like to say when we look at it, uh, there's almost 8 billion people on the planet. And therefore, there's 8 billion universes right here because everyone has a mind. And when we look at the metaverse, it could only be something that becomes utilitarian to these 8 billion universes that are here. And we want to make sure uh, by our action items that it is used, the metaverse that is, is used properly and purposefully 
for the greater good of, of, of us all. We learn from uh, Web 2.0, the internet, and how it is useful and how it has been misused. And we want to take the noteworthy actions, uh, the noteworthy things from the internet and uh, duplicate and magnify them in the metaverse in the web 3.0. So uh, one area that has to be given more of its proper is the mind because it is one of our greatest assets. Um, it's like preacher to cry talking to you about that. However, for the audience, it is, it's an asset that must be given as proper and dealt with in a way in which uh, we build up, we construct uh, upon it, not destruct upon it. And the life germs that travel through the words we speak, through the mediums uh, and the energy that comes from the mediums that we uh, deal with, uh, either construct or destruct the mind. And um, yeah, this is why we are mentality metaphors because it all starts there. And if we were able to go totally hands-free, uh, totally body-free, totally physically free and operate in a metaverse, then that operation would not be able to be operated without the presence of the mind. Absence of everything physical, the mind would still have to be incorporated and enlisted to engage within it. So that in a capsule is um, the mentality metaverse um, as it applies to the discussion and the introduction to you, Dr. Vidal. So I, uh, I'm learning a lot from all of you to begin with, and I certainly appreciate you giving me the platform to say a few words. Uh, on my behalf, uh, as well as uh, what uh, uh, Bharat uh, and Alex has been doing. It's a pleasure to meet uh, all of you uh, via this media that we have now available. But it excites me when I hear you about the mind. But I do have to ask you one question to all of you, since you are the pioneer in the research work and uh, here you're all sitting together to solve the unsolvable problems. Do you know where the mind is in the body? Mm -hmm. We have looked in the brain, opening the brain, looking around. We have not found the mind. <laughs> so where does the mind sit? I've heard it's at the center of the heart. So nobody really knows where the mind sits, right? We know uh, extremely well about the body. We know about the brain. You know the anatomy. We know the physiology. But still there's something missing that is not clicking in our mind. Uh, again, we don't know where the mind is, but it is a thought process, how the brain cells behaves and outputs into, which we think is a mind. We know where the brain is. We know all the different parts of the brain uh, about the motor functions, about the optic part, about the speech language, about the understanding, about the expressing everything else, but still something that still requires a lot of research work to understand the mind. And as you said very correctly, they say everybody have the brain. God was very genius to give us a brain cells, billions of neurons in every brain we have. And he was genius to give everybody the almost same amount of the neurons also. Hmm. But why everybody behaves differently then? It is mind boggling game. Why everybody behave differently? And you will not identify a two person same behaving exactly. Even the mind, the neurons are there. It depends upon how we utilize our brain cells that God has given. And everybody's understanding of utilizing the brain cells are very different. People think more positive and take every opportunity turning negative into the positive because of the mindset that have, that think more positive. And people also complain to me every time, negative. It, it, they didn't do this thing, they didn't do this thing, he didn't do this thing and so on, is a negative approach. Even though brain cells, the neurons are still there in their mind, God have not taken them off. But his behaving is accepting the realities were different. And that's what I think is the mind. So the mindset to develop is a whole different world. And I think we still need a lot of work to be done in that part about the mindset. 
But I think this gives a great platform for the metaphors is to learn and understand and to apply it more physically uh, in this human being, the brain cells that we have, we can utilize and change the whole aspect of the treatment about the world that we need to, particularly for the needy people. And there's so many needy people at this time that we are handicapped, we're not able to provide the help they need. So it's a fascinating field. And I tell my students and my fellows and my uh, residents that I teach that ne neurology, the brain is in such a field that if you like it, you will love it. If you don't like it, you hate it because it's, there is nothing in between. You got to like it, what you do. And you learn a lot from that and you can dive in as much as you want to. It's so much open field in the neurology field that one can dive into. And as you, uh, I'm hoping that something good comes out of this year conference, we can learn. And I particularly want to learn from you guys uh, and as the time passes. So with that, I thank you again and I hope uh, you all uh, achieve your goals meeting into this conference and coming out something that we can utilize in a day-to-day -day, uh, normal human being life. I thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Vitalbhai. So as a president of Corastas Advanced Technology, uh, the company philosophy is, you know, we, we are always forefront of technology. So as a Corastas, uh, as a company, like we always think one step ahead and uh, we have been working uh, because of this, uh, the new change of quantum computing, uh, virtual reality. And we want, our company want to put that as a pioneer, like a ADT of, you know, metaverse, the security guard. If somebody, somebody do some mischief in this metaverse world from our company, our, some, somehow or one of the, our, uh, brand or uh, what we call security brand will create that will capture them. So that's kind of a uh, philosophy reasons. I'm, uh, I'm, and uh, I really appreciate Dr. Victor Weiss reason. So we like to always bring, and hopefully we, we will be forefront in this technology uh, of uh, especially in cyber world, how we evolve with the metaphor of this metaverse. Uh, so let me uh, say a couple of few words uh, from my side uh, as, as a technology uh, and uh, the philosophy of Corasius, what we see in the future of this metaverse. So it's, as I define, like I, you know, if, if we ask 10 people, uh, what is the metaverse? They will give you different definition. Since this is like evolving uh, field and, but key component, there are four key component, right? So they may, people may say different things. So first one is AI, uh, quantum computers, social media, and and human, uh, you know, human values. Uh, these are like one. So many people are not talking that. So right now, what we discuss about mind, right? So that's a uh, Dr. J uh, and Dr. Vitalbhai also focusing on that. So that's one of the part uh, in that area. So as we de define, you know, uh, as a metaverse, right? So, uh, as in, in perspective of physics, so metaverse is, is the stage where time and space both meet. Okay? So that's, that's the world we, we want to evolve. That's kind of world we try to bring whole uh, different technology companies. This, they're partnering, they're coming uh, with different ideas, and joining this race of metaverse. So here we are not challenging which company is better in technology providing what AR, VR, what they pro provide. But as, as, a, as a one wholeness, uh, metaverse will give a super mind, like mind of billions of the people on this earth. And when they, uh, they converse, when they communicate uh, in the social platform using metaverse, and that will give you the power and it will solve the problem. So when multiple mind uh, combine together and they give the resultant mind uh, is kind of super mind. So we have seen supercomputer, but we have not seen super mind. Super mind, we say individual person, but collectively whole universe mind. So that's what, uh, what I see uh, this uh, 
metaverse will bring into. So when, I, when we talk about you know a metaverse, right? I said like four component uh, as we will evolving. The most important thing uh, to make this metaverse, we need uh, you know very very fast competitions. We need a network, very fast network like neural network. Very quickly we can sense and transmit the message. Uh, so that this development of 6G, 5G and all. So side by side, the scientists, that group of people are working on tactile information uh, channels. So through which you can send your sense, uh, you can text us side by side when you talk uh, sending data. So this all, all this technology uh, when combined like communications. Uh, so with quantum processing, and also quantum communication, quantum information system, like three uh, things like uh, evolving faster network, currently that which is helping uh, bringing this reality close to reality, but it will take, still it will take a long time. Uh, but I said a uh, very important part of quantum communications, the evolution of the quantum computing. So as we talk about quantum, when we, when we say the, the speed, right? So computing, uh, this bring the computing need of today's computer to make uh, virtual reality or metaverse become real. So we need tremendous speed of computation, which uh, quantum computer provide like million times faster than supercomputer, right? So calculation speed wise. So we will see it will evolve and it will getting like billion times faster uh, over a period of time. And that will make like, you know, a competition pr process is very, very handy. And uh, then all, you know, neuron expressions, the message feeling, we can, we can process very quickly. And the people sitting from one universe to other universe, they can also see. So this is the phenomena of quantum, right? So quantum give, uh, give like two things. Quantum give us quantum computer. Same time, it's give you opportunity for us, but also it pause the challenge. So as soon as the, we are evolving in quantum computer, all our security, like uh, whatever mechanism we are using today, there's, those are out of door. Those have become useless. Quantum computer can sniff, can easily, uh, you know, easily can find out what cryptography we are using. It easily decode uh, whatever uh, information we decoded. Right. So that pose one of the risk, but same time uh, we are working. So uh, we have a patent, uh, the company has been working in the quantum resistant cryptography. Uh, we are pioneer uh, in that field also. We develop some of the work in, in that area. So idea of uh, same time, I'd say like two important part, uh, which making the today's uh, uh, the metaverse becoming reality, three things, what I said. One was communication, which is happening through quantum communication, quantum uh, information system. Second is super computing process with quantum computer. And third one, tactile, uh, those tactile network, which 5G, 6G, and with the cloud computing, which we are bringing together. So all these three things uh, makes uh, metaverse uh, very close to reality. And that's what like, a lot of pioneer companies uh, in, in industry, they are focusing and bringing a lot of new thoughts on the table. So uh, when we talk about quantum communications, uh, so this is like very uh, first thing, like I have studied quantum computer uh, theory in high school, 12th grade, like when first time, and the first uh, quantum exposure to us was Schrodinger equation. So quantum Schrodinger equation is kind of, I will, or uh, many things that's kind of pioneer of quantum computing, right? So there's two world uh, that brings, one world is defined by long range forces, for example, Newton forces, we call Newtonian, and some other short range forces which Schrodinger equations uh, uh, follow. So that's uh, uh, bring new uh, phenomena. And uh, so uh, I, that, uh, you know, the quantum, quantum uh, superpositions uh, is kind of the main, uh, uh, the benefit we are getting, the processing, solving, you know, factorial problem in fractions. Those may take, uh, may take months to find out that the supercomputer is uh, 
this uh, mainly a quantum computer can can crack them in a very short period of time. So those are the area uh, I am really excited that we are bringing like this exactly the timing. The timing uh, means everybody we are means not we only, but whole uh, world is working in that area, and we are bringing all those required technologies are coming together and make it happen metaverse. And uh, so, so the the phenomena, the the properties of quantum, right? So those uh, entanglement, like uh, some some particle, if you give some external force and bring two uh, particle together, and they 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 become kind of pairing of those particles. And this particle, what happens when you leave them uh, like a very very far distance? If you tweak with one guy, uh, other particle will react. So it's the spooky uh, effect uh, that happens. So we can. Uh, so I read one one novel. Uh, I think it was when I was in high school. Then so one person like uh, he is identical to you. He met with you, like you see him and you shake hand, and you both disappears. So this is the the pause, like you know particles and antiparticles. So this universe, a universe is made of, of people. So I'm really, uh, so when I talk about metaverse uh, and we have, you know, different characters in metaverse. So people might be coming with uh, opposite, uh, you know, antiparticle metaverse. And uh, uh, we need to be careful, right? So uh, in that area, before we say kind with, uh, uh, them and we both will disappear from the metaverse. So those uh, those are just uh, I'm saying uh, is a is a, is a some kind of uh, only uh, novel story. Uh, but uh, I say theory of matters and antimatter uh, may happen. And uh, so when I talk about uh, you know when we come with those complexities, so much processing power, so much uh, computing. You know, social media uh, with metaverse, massive communication with multi, many, many people, millions of people might be communicating at the same time. So massive uh, communication. So the problem, cybersecurity prospect, you know, I like to touch is that what will happen like when, when we interact with so many different media, many, many items, you need to interact with them. And it's interactions. Uh, you need to exchange information. So, in order to you know uh, interact properly, if you give the proper effect, uh, you need to go through multiple layer uh, of this metaverse technologies. And if something went wrong in one layer, so it will affect uh, and and it will cause the more threat in cyber world. So one very simple example also, like uh, somebody created avatar uh, on metaverse. And we have avatar, we are in, in some places in mall or somewhere. And uh, some other avatar is following us and what we are doing, what shopping we are doing, what we are eating, they can see and observe us, right? So somebody can stack you. <laughs> so so what, uh, what, how can we avoid? Right. So I think these technology companies uh, are considering those privacy issues very strictly. So the reason is I'm saying here is metaverse is not different than reality in the physical world. Okay. So in physical world, how our privacy is important, same way in metaverse, the privacy will be very, very important. So the in physical world, if you're sitting in our home, we are secure, we are private. We need preserve our privacy, nobody will come, nobody will see what we are doing, right? But uh, in metaverse, people can come into your private home, right? So how will you protect? Whom we call, which police will come? So, okay, so, so idea is that we, we think that uh, we, our team will build the police force. And that police force will, you know, if somebody's doing mischief in, in that metaverse world, and we will take them action, what we have to do, either destroy, uh, transport, uh, tel tel transport him, 
or whatever action we need to do. Uh, that's when we some stardom policy and procedures. Right? So those are some 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 ideas uh, evolve. You know, still I said uh, it's evolutionary stage and a lot of work being done. But uh, I like to uh, bring a uh, quick like video of one of the that we have been working with one of the team a member. Uh, He's working the applications of metaverse in healthcare. So these are challenges and uh, how uh, that helping, okay, apart from uh, what quantum and all. So I can go and keep talking on quantum physics and cybersecurity, but uh, here uh, it's not, uh, I, I'm not uh, going to bore you by giving academic uh, lecture, but let's see, I, I li like to play uh, a, a short, video uh, Dr. Dhananjit Singh, our counterpart in South Korea. South Korea is investing a lot of money uh, and I think they will be the leader. This is my, my forecast. South Korea will be in the leader of metaverse world. Okay? Uh, that's, that's how Singapore become leader in, in biotech technology. They, the government put a lot of money. Everybody was, uh, was again uh, mixed into that stream. So South Korea has been working and, and they announced in a couple of weeks that they want to put lot maximum money in the metaverse world. Uh, in my this talk today, I'm going to talk about the metaverse and AI inspired solution for health alignment diagnosis. So this is our recent project where uh, we are trying to use metaverse, one of the approach to help for the depressed people to find out their health condition and provide them some uh, services on that as well. So I'm working as a full professor in the Department of Electronics Engineering at Hankook University of Foreign Studies uh, in South Korea. So in this topic, we have a first three approach, which I would like to introduce here, how to collect the data from the health alignment diagnosis case. So we have one is the metaverse, another one is the smartwatch and smartphone. So these kind of uh, the uh, technologies, which we are going to connect with the, our AI based cloud platform, where we are also trying to develop the analysis, uh, the data, which data we are going to collect from the metaverse or the 3D based VR system to detect the patient's depression status, sentiment analysis, mental status, those kind of information we are going to collect it, as well as his health condition, we are going to monitor from the, with the help of a smartwatch, a smartphone. So those real-time data, which we are going to receive it, uh, we are going to share those data to the doctor or the respective person so they can analyze those data and recommend to the patient or the related person for the treatment, uh, proper treatment before going to be major uh, situation in that stage. So we can predict this kind of solutions before going to be uh, the mental status has some damage scenario as well. So what we try to do that, as we believe that metaverse is the uh, eliminating the barrier to the counseling and also metaverse prevent and treat depression through the gamification mechanism as well. So with the help of gamification, we are going to prevent, detect, and treatment. So what we try to do that, we are going to make the 3D VR games, which the related person is going to play uh, before going to, then he can extend most of the time in with the, those kind of gamification system. Those real-time data we are going to collect from the person, and then we are going to analyze based on our research algorithm architecture, then we can predict the person's uh, his mental status, his the sentiment uh, scenario, how he is going to react in future. So for example, in the prevention case, the regular exercise program, so the person or the patient can uh, select his uh, favorite character and he can uh, play the game based on the exercise kind of his cartoon character can do and then he can give the points and he can communicate with their character. He can check his by, by his mindset by himself as well as he can share his current status with the doctor. So with this kind of uh, mechanism, we can prevent. And also the one way of uh, speaking, and we are going to collect the facial expressions of the person 
sense of how his mind uh, mood is swinging during the playing the game Dr. Barath, we lost audio. I think you, you put it on mute. Sorry, we lost audio. Can you hear the audio? audio? It's volume. And, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, don't, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and continue. If you put on mute, we lose his audio too. Sorry, oh, oh, go ahead. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. And he can uh, play the game based on the exercise kind of his cartoon character can do, and then he can give the points and he can communicate with their character. He can check his by, by his mindset by himself as well as he can share his current status with the doctor. So with this kind of uh, material, we can prevent. And also the one way of uh, speaking, and we are going to collect the facial expressions of the person, sense of how his mind uh, mood is swinging during the playing the games in the 3D games. So we are going to collect those kind of real time data, voice expression and face expression as well as the text expression if he is going to chat with someone so for example we can recommend them to write the daily daily routines diary so based on that we can detect those kind of information and the based on those kind of studies we can recommend them uh, for the group, group cleaning there are lots of people uh, making the uh, virtual environment to consult with the doctors or respective persons and also the online doctor training to present for those kind of uh, uh, counseling scenario they can go for the regular treatment and also regulate the exercise program those kind of uh, uh, supporting mechanism we are planning to support for the uh, to the this kind of scenario what we do that the metaverse is going to be very much useful for the as the for the doctor's aspect what we try to do that the patients become as a character and he want to be uh, replace himself as a character to connect with the doctor as well because uh, the doctor and patient can communicate with the character so they can freely share their information rather than he is going to share face to face with uh, the character they can uh, communicate with the treatment purpose and also doctors are all the mechanisms that we are planning to develop in our laboratory so those mechanisms are going to analyze those data what the expression they are expressing during the communication time based on the audio, facial, and text, then uh, the solution is going to recommend them that his mindset or his the, uh, emotions condition based on those real time data. And also, the patients can make the hobbies that he can enjoy. For example, so somebody like to play the guitar, somebody like to play the uh, jogging. So they can select the character over the 3D virtually and he can enjoy and he can feel, we can collect his uh, emotions condition during those kind of character as well. As well as the nearby people can realize whether the person is depressed or not. He can communicate with the person and even based on the communication data or he can, uh, at the same time, who are going for the situation, we can expect uh, those kind of information for the clinical purpose and recommend them for uh, the treatment as well. So for the mental health alignment study, we basically there are the several phases we have uh, divided. For example, the depression, the overall mental function continues to uh, deteriorate, and the advice, the effect of the daily lifestyle, the person's daily lifestyle, we can analyze on that. Self-esteem, self-esteem is also worth for being loved. And also I believe that I am the comp uh, competent person or not. So this kind of uh, scenario is very much important. The person, once they go for those kind of stage, uh, stage as well. The relationship between the depression as well as self-esteem, uh, for example, the American philosopher Will, uh, William James has said that the bound self-esteem can lead to depression and lead to the suicide as well. So this is also a very serious issue. So metaverse and VR is the high-tech technology that allows people to experience in real world into the computer added virtual world as well. So the effect of this kind of sites, more than 80% information obtained through the sensory organs, so which is obtained through the sites as well. So we believe that 
this kind of mechanism is going to be a uh, huge support for the incoming future and the lots of people is going to use this kind of mechanism virtual world to play games to play to come to concert with the respective services as well for example here uh, one of the example is showing that game uh, a game sense for belonging for example after counseling to the doctor the doctor is going to recommend them to the patients okay you have to play this kind of game for to collect more information to to go more accurate information to the patients so it can identify patients tendency and also provides a place where patients can communicate into the virtual world as well so there are the several games which are 3d based and virtual yeah, uh, virtual reality based devices they can play and collect real time data so those data all studied by the platform which we are going to connect in our this project so patients also share their solutions their situations and the solutions with the doctors or respective persons with a common interest in the depression patient feels a sense of belonging for each other and overcome for the depression for example treatment and prevention this kind of solutions are very much useful in the real world scenario for example here we can we can see that the other doctors can also monitor during the conversation as a character right cartoon character is the patient and doctor are counseling or discussing both of them are not uh, the real time presented but their characters are presenting in 3d environment using the metaverse so doctor and patients can consult and other doctors can also real time can monitor and give their recommendations in a very more accurate diagnosis kind of system so somebody is going to check his impression you know facial expression somebody is going to more analyze his voice quality and how he is going to speak it somebody is going to analyze what kind of data what kind of words is speaking during the conversation so the counseling is also going to be recorded in the video so it will help to diagnosis for the treatment condition and if the patient want he or she can make his or her favorite character to consult with the doctor so this kind of uh, the young people can feel more comfortable to use this kind of environment we believe that and it is the another this game that called the uh, put yourself into someone else shoes this is the very nice quote which we can say that the data you need for counseling uh, the collection data of the case and conversation data of the patients with the depression so we can say that the collection of walking environment and exercise background so we can collect this kind of real time data we can recommend them for the game contents when you touch to the character character can speak so this means the patients can more uh, friendly behave with the character as well you can choose and also you can go for the options to talk with them as a character so person can directly interact with their own character if you choose to hobbies such as exercise walking reading so they can choose their character and they can do, do together in the parallel to play the games in the background so this kind of all environment playing games playing exercise talking communication so in the vr virtual environment they can do this kind of solutions as well so here uh, as i just mentioned that we are doing this kind of work uh, for the research purpose as well so we try to collect real time data so what we try to do that with the help of smartwatch so to identify the patient's condition through the smartwatch what we try to do that when the patient condition is depressed it brightness and game environment in the game environment so that the characters can treat the patient as well so in this graph you can see that there are the time t represent x axis represent the team and uh, the y axis represent the patient condition so there are the blue color and red color so when patients feeling happy and good mood the during the playing game uh, the gamification mechanism with the help of metaverse uh, the 3d environment so they feel happy so it goes up but suddenly his mind swing and he is feeling low then again graph will go down so this kind of data real time data we are going to record it and the our platform going to study this kind of all data he is going to record it and is doing the analysis we can predict the conditions more accurate condition not only the uh, real time it going to be more i can say the scientific data we are going to collect it with the help of technologies to make them the more accurate information similar data also can recommend to the patients to which kind of games they can has to play 
based on their mind frame, we can we have several kinds of in future we have a lot of game still now in future also we believe that there are lots of game doctors can recommend to the patient or the system also can recommend okay you can play these kind of games based on your hobbies so we can collect those those kind of information to for their further study and treatment so encourage patient to participate is their hobbies patients can also treat by the understanding and encouraging for the sharing their own character so if suppose patient they can uh, participate want to virtually participate they can select their character and they can share and they can enjoy so those kind of recording real time data we can record it and also you can check the patient condition while playing the game through the smartwatch like sleep heart rate those kind of information we can collect it uh, uh, during this uh, gamification scenario when he is involved in that kind of situation the character can determine the patient's condition with the data obtained through the smartwatch and lead the patient's emotion in the good conditions uh, so good direction so what we try to do that uh, this kind of effect going to treat them uh, real time environment so this is our research architecture what we try to do that the person here uh, this is the one of the our architecture where we try to do that the patients want to real time communicate with their uh, respective doctors or friend so in this case we are using the simple smartphone so in the smartphone they are video live communicating to their friend and with this video live this communication what we try to do that we try to collect the modality like a v t a means audio data v means video data t means text data so we have used feature restriction then we find out arousal and balance scenario so these are the our training data and test data both of arousal and balance scales and here are the our cross layer modeling architecture which we have used for the real time so that we claim that uh, this uh, cnm lstm cross uh, model connection which is going to collect the feature extraction modeling from the audio video and text uh, modeling architecture where we try to find out some results so this is our uh, the hyperparameter searching uh, algorithms results which we find out for the uh, cloud server so what our approach is that to use this kind of metaverse and ai based platform to make it the more uh, sentiment and depression analysis kind of solution created a uh, virtual environment 3d environment so the students can see her daughters and she can talk and she can share her emotions new treatment is carried out by the increasing the utilization of the uh, visual sense through the vr can talk to about this project as well. So I think thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Uh, Dr. Vital Boy, we thank you for coming back. We want to show you a very early clip. You may not remember this because you're focused on the putting on the headset. So that's you uh, about five, six years ago, uh, testing out the VR in, in, in the lab. You even predicted that medical schools training, doing surgery in this platform is something that's going to come. And uh, you invested in, 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 in us and in this technology. And what we want to show you is, yes, we also went into you know, looking at the Bitcoin mining. This is again, uh, Dr. Vittelbeis team, they're very hands-on. Look how the miners are opened and we're looking at the different chips that are being used. And we're also, uh, he's very hands-on in coming and understanding an emerging technology. So just to give you a shout out and say thank you uh, for, for having that foresight. And as, as, as you can see in some of the pictures, he's always been an entrepreneur with a social cause, right? He wants to, and this is where I think the metaverse is something that kind of beautifully fits in with what he has been doing for the past 30, 40 years lobby, talking, figuring out ways to improve the human uh, condition. So going into this uh, video, this was one of our presentations where uh, this gentleman created a bionic hand. He calls it the ability hand. And obviously th th this application of using a prosthetic hand, he took it to the next level. He made it competitive so that it can be used in, in sports competition. When you look at this, when you look at 
uh, what Facebook is doing. This is happening right now in, the, in Facebook. They have an open call to get people to uh, interact using uh, gloves to get some physical uh, interaction from the virtual world. And I remember when I was talking to you, you were talking about feeling when you had that headphone on. You know, you didn't feel that there was there was something else missing for you to take it into uh, a surgery or into an operating room. So what Facebook is trying to do is trying to create that haptic sense in the gloves. And they are trying to figure out a way that you see how they're trying to get the senses and try to connect the real through the virtual and then if you connect it back to the artificial. So if we think about it, that may be the bigger play is you got the real, then you got the virtual, which you can do imaginations, testing, simulation, validations, and then you can go into the real where an action gets done. So what happened is that the metaverse skyrocketed in the mentality, the concept of metaverse overtook us from, it is more advanced that we don't have the hardware. Even Facebook right now does not have the hardware. Look at the, the gloves. Look at how clunky and prototype it is. So we are, at least in this stage, we, the, the technology is behind the GPUs and the, and the hardware. Uh, and this again, Mahesh is gonna talk about the, the Microsoft HoloLens play. The, 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 we, or behind the metaverse mentality, the idea of what could be just took over. And that's where we are seeing uh, out of all the presenters, we have about seven or eight presenters from your industry, from neuroscience. So you are coming in and saying, guys, we know technology is great, but now it's, it's the job for, uh, for uh, physicists and neurosurgeons to come in and help you uh, shape some of the things. So this may be your time in the metaverse. So immediately, right now, what can you do? What is the hybrid? What is the Prius of our time? We can't go all electric, but we have to go hybrid in this phase, right? So what is the Prius? AR, VR, what is it something we can do right away? So one of the, the examples here, this is my daughter. She's sitting in a very normal computer. This is a balloon, a physical balloon, but that horse on top of that balloon is, is virtual, but when she moves the balloon, that horse moves and she, she's interacting with it without any VR or without any a, the headset, without any VR or any kind of device. She's just using that webcam and the webcam is doing this. This is kind of a reverse AR. Let's try to, you know, in, in this meeting today, let's try to have a hybrid, something that can bridge, or at least today, metaverse, that we can start getting everybody excited. So this is a reverse VR, where instead of the horse, come, you know, is projected in the table, and you have a goggle or something uh, uh, to see it, we're projecting what we have inside the webcam and trying to see how we can manipulate that. And in that context, you can see she can interact, she can play with it, and she is even seeing herself inside uh, of that, that uh, inside the monitor. So we th thought this was something we would want to talk to you. All the speech we gave today, what do you think, Dr. Vithalbhai, your prophecy uh, from policy, from investment, and the future? If you just give us a very kind of broad stroke. Uh, that would be very helpful. Dr. Alex, it's uh, fascinating what you are saying and what you're showing us. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is opens up the whole new world uh, in, in the medical field and particularly in the neurology to say, uh, you know, if all this becomes more practical, I think we don't have to open this skull anymore at all. We can do the surgeries, we can fix the parts of the brain without doing anything at all. And not only that, we can even see which part of the brain is not functioning and which needs to be fixed. I think this is a great uh, things to develop. But again, as you say, it's in very preliminary stage. It needs a lot of work needs to be done before it becomes a practical reality uh, into uh, you know, what we do every day. So this is interesting because when you initially saw the VR five years ago, what was your, what was your thought process and how has it changed now? 
So I, I was amazed when you saw me that time, which was a long time ago, as you know. Uh, and I, I appreciate you still remembering that and still took at pictures and you're still showing that. So you know, it reminded me how particular you are, which is a great thing to hear. Uh, but, uh, you know, things have uh, now that tool that you saw me that time, it becomes almost like a, a tool every, available everywhere. It was not that time at all. And now kids are playing with that. People are playing with that, using that practically, going somewhere else, sitting in their own uh, bedroom which is uh, you know, hard to believe, but that's becoming a, almost a reality. And I think that they will come, what you are imagining now, and what I want to see practically that happens is uh, implementing this in a neuroscience uh, with, without opening the skull, without looking at anybody's brain, we can see what is going on inside and how we can fix it. I don't think time is that too far away from that uh, happening. And as you all sitting there, you are the one who creating the field for us the base, the platform for us that we can invest the funding or money to learn something, to develop something that we can apply to the human being who needs the help. Thank you so much for opening up and as, as a medical surgeon to say that, to make that prophecy and, and, and own up to it in, in, in a public forum. So thank you for that. Now we have Mahesh Chand, another visionary who has built a community called C Sharp Corner, which makes the programming and coding for this metaverse 3D and 3D and Unity and Unreal. One of the core programming language is C Sharp. And Dr. Mahesh Chand has 27 million developers supported in that platform. They're all excited. And when they hear that, yes, now we have this, this industry and this medical industry and this application of the human mind, Welcome, Mahesh. I'm, I'm going to, you know, without any further ado, Mahesh Chan. Well, <laughs> thank you, um, Dr. Jay, Dr. Alex, and uh, Dr. Bharat Bhai, and Linda, nice meeting you. Thank you, everybody, for having me here. It's an honor to be in, uh, you know, among this uh, big presence of, you know, Dr. Victor Bhai is there. Obviously, he's a visionary, and, um, you know, he's done so much more than, you know, I would do. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to actually uh, shed some lights on the on the whole this whole metaverse and AR VR and also mixed reality. And the Microsoft's uh, version of AR VR is called mixed reality, uh, and that's where holographic computing comes in picture. So I will talk a little bit more about the holographic computing and their device holo lens and other devices that that. Um, and then I'm also going to actually um, bring the blockchain in picture here because blockchain is going to play a major role in the world of metaverse. Um, again, my uh, here and anything I'm bringing here is actually based on my experience and what we are building now. And mostly my experience is from enterprise level. Um, like introduction uh, and some of new people who are joining me. Uh, if you're not on C-Sharp Corner, I'm founder of C-Sharp Corner. I started that in 2000. I'm also CEO of Mindcracker. Mindcracker is a innovation consulting firm here in Philadelphia, a small company, but we're always working with latest emerging technology. And that's how I made Bharat, Bharat Bhai here because we were talking about some of the new technologies. A uh, little background, I'm a former Microsoft regional director, 14 times MVP. I've written a bunch of books uh, when I was young, once upon a time, 20 years ago, I wrote a bunch of programming books. Uh, that was a fun time. Uh, just a little background on C-Sharp Corner. I founded C-Sharp Corner as just as a fun community to share my knowledge with others. But over the years, so many people join and they start all start sharing their knowledge and more and more young people came, and students came, and developers came, learn, and they're giving back to the community. So look at this last year, this is direct from Google. I just took the screenshot actually before this presentation. And as a matter of fact, I made this presentation an hour ago. <laughs> uh, so I just took the screenshot. So last 12 months, it shows that we have 29 million people visited the website in just last 12 months. And it's still growing now. So with that said, let's get back to the topic today. So Microsoft has this device they launched in 2000. They were working from since 2013. So the concept of mod metaverse is not really new. Uh, we just heard a lot because Facebook changed their name to Meta 
but metaverse has been around there. The idea, the concept, even the vision has been around there for a while. And this is my son when he was, I think this is five years old, 2015, when I got my first HoloLens, um, we start building applications on that. And within a year, actually, we presented to a couple of enterprises and they liked the idea. And we started building POC since then. Um, so what, what, what HoloLens actually is, before even I go there, let's uh, spend a little time on Metaverse, which you all know probably, anybody who's watching the, this uh, event and conference probably know by now what Metaverse is, but uh, I'll just share a little two minutes on this anyway. So Metaverse is all about creating digital properties, right? That's what we are going, we are heading into creating digital properties. Properties can be a land, it can be a city, it can be a game, it can be a universe, it can be anything. It's virtual, obviously. And within that, almost everything is virtual, right? There's a, uh, shops are virtual, cities are virtual, you know, everything is virtual. And biggest use case of metaverse has always been around is video games. In video games, in AR, VR, Kids are already playing these video games. They have their own cities. They can own their own, you know, armies. They can buy and sell stuff already. It's already happening. So this is not something new. Um, and then one of the biggest thing I see as a big application from my side and enterprise side is holoportation. What holoportation really is, it's a 3D holograms are being in one place from the, while they are, you know, real people can be in different places. Like right now, but then we can all join, everybody can join in one room in a hologram shape, 3D, which can actually eventually be look like us in real life. And that's where we are heading into, right? So I think when your question was, where are we and where are we heading? Right now, we kind of do the holograms and holograms look like, you know, the Yoda kind of holograms where they are, they are holographic objects, but eventually, the technology is heading there where we will look like a real person. And hopefully eventually through these new sensors, we can actually even sense, we can touch, we can even smell. So those sensors are also being built already. And I'm sure that, you know, this, that's already covered there. So as I said, what is metaverse? It's a, it's, a, it's a virtual world, but with some real sense, right? It looks like we are there. It looks like because of the devices, it feels like it's our world and we can have different avatars, we can have different roles, we can have different role plays. You know, we can have virtual city where, you know, in real life, I may not be a mayor, but in a virtual city, I can go and become a mayor. <laughs> um, and so that's where we are heading into, right? It's a combination of technology. It includes AR, VR, mixed reality, digital assets. Um, also, people have identities there, right? The objects are there, everything is digital. And, Recent, I'm sure many of us have heard of this NFT, non-fungible tokens. That's also pushing this world even forward. So what Microsoft has is they have a different, um, um, they have their own idea for a long time and their focus has always been on enterprises. And that's really, I like about the, uh, personally, and I'll share my views on Metaverse as well, but, um, having business applications and technologies make big sense to me. Uh, I'm not so sure about, you know, building something for kids and children and giving them devices rather than playing outside that I would never support that. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but if, you know, if it's solving a business problem, if uh, I'll give you a perfect example right here, there are already applications being built between healthcare systems where uh, during the surgery, surgeon can uh, live have a call you, using the holo, holo, holo lens device where they can show the live surgery and where other doctors can come in, not only give advice, but they can also move needles around and say, this is exactly what you want to do. And this is happening. Um, I have a friend, his company is working already with a, with a um, doctors, a bunch of doctors in London and, and in the US. So this is kind of already they are using so your question was, where are we now? So POCs, those POCs are already here. At least we can see the 3D, 3D objects, right? In, in education, right? Educating in medical science, this is being used a lot where rather than using a heart shape 2D, I can now look at my heart shape and I can expand it. I can go inside it. I can cut it. I can do all those things. 
it gives me the idea that this is how actually it looks like in 3D. So that's where some of the applications I believe are, we are heading in there, adding more value to. Um, and then with the, with the Microsoft Mesh, it's a, it's a their platform, it's a cloud platform with Microsoft Mesh where, they, see, whenever we do all these three rendering, 3D rendering or object transportation from one, one, one place to other place, it requires a lot of processing. It requires you know, high bandwidth and speed and all devices should be able to support that as well. So what Microsoft Mesh is, it's a, it's a cloud platform where all the computing is done on the cloud rather than on the device. Um, and then, and it's, it's high powered and it's, it's usually it's AI is already there, machine learning is already there, a lot of additional data is there, models are there. So it makes the whole processing faster. So the transportation from one place to other place in a 3D object, which is a you know, lot of data can be done much faster. And also the communication. Um, and they just launched, Microsoft just launched Microsoft Teams. They're already using this whole concept of of um, um, this metaverse where all of us can have our own avatars or real pictures and they look like 3D, even though they look like cartoons right now, but we can be in a room, we can be in a coffee shop, we can be um, even hanging out in a park while we can be joining us from different places. So that's kind of already happening. Um, and now Microsoft Mass has opened up not only just for HoloLens, but even you can use all kinds of devices now. So with the HoloLens, I can have a HoloLens. You can have a Google device. You can have a Facebook device. Anybody can have, you know, the HTC Vive and all that. So it's like they are now working with almost all those, um, these AR uh, virtual reality, um, you know, devices. So that's kind of already happening. So how big is market? I'm sure somebody's already covered that. I know Bharatwa, you were talking about how big this market could be. Um, and they're, uh, this is a just recent data came from Bloomberg. They're already predicting this more, you know, $1.4 trillion market in coming time very, very soon. So this is going to be big. This is a big opportunity for all innovators, all young guys who are trying to build their own, you know, companies in this space. Um, so this is going to be a big, and uh, advertising is a big piece of it. And as a matter of fact, um, I have a friend, he's building a game it's kind of metaverse. It's a metaverse where he's building a city. In that city, you can, it, it will have these, let's say it will have a Taj Mahal, it will have Eiffel Towers, it will have all these, these uh, you know, world you know, famous places. On that, you can put your ad and you can buy that ad. So imagine your ad is being on Taj Mahal. Your company is being displayed on Taj Mahal. So as you can see from this, advertising is the first place where this, uh, this money is going to go. So now let's back to our topic with the importance of blockchain and metaverse. Um, as, as you know, as we, we all know that metaverse is all about digital. It's all digital objects, digital identities, digital places. Um, so virtual currency, which is a block, you know, developed based on blockchain is also a digital currency is virtual. So anything we do in metaverse is going to most likely to use virtual currency. And that's why it's coming a big play that if uh, I'm selling, for example, some edu you know, uh, education um, education material, or I am teaching somebody in metaverse, or or I am even uh, you know buying and trading cards, it's probably likely to happen in terms of virtual currency, and that's where cryptocurrency is going to play a major role. And I see, I see many games already have NFTs. They also have tokens where people can buy and sell things uh, within their virtual world. You can buy new avatars, you can buy new skins, you can buy new um, powers, all that is already happening. The, the concept from, from the cards, real cards, game cards is already coming into virtual world in form of these NFTs where I can you know, own an NFT and then I can buy and sell. Um, and then security, right? Security, I'm gonna move this my screen here a little bit. Uh, uh, so this whole, uh, I think this, yeah, this is covering my slides for sure. So this whole, uh, even digital economy, right? That's, this is all based on going to be a cryptocurrency. Uh, we are not going to use real credit card in virtual world. We are not going to use real dollar. We are going to likely to use, have a crypto wallet. Crypto wallet is going to hold our real, you know, 
money and that money is going to be used. That's what this world is coming to. And that's why the cryptocurrency is going to play a major role. Uh, and as I mentioned games, there's so many games are being built. I see, I was at conference um, this week, Monday, Tuesday at uh, Algorand Decipher in Miami. And there are more gaming companies coming out with NFTs in all cryptocurrencies than anything else. And obviously, gamers are the industries where they jump on these things before anybody else. Gamers and then healthcare, right? Those are two trends we are seeing. Healthcare is a necessity and a need. Gamers is for fun and entertainment. Entertainment, but these, uh, Doctor J, you are muted. I just uh, added to what you said that game uh, gamers uh, uh, healthcare is a necessity or a need, and gamers are a want. Yeah. Yeah, gamers for you know these guys are exciting they're fun they love technology and that's what it's a good thing they all actually test our use cases so that's a good thing <laughs> so <laughs> make sure it's working make sure you know there's and they also there's a lot of there's a lot of geniuses out there they try to steal things and fraud and they try to crack things which also make these systems better even though they, their purpose may be different but in the end of the day they are the ones who are making these systems secure so this all works out good for you know, as, as long as we have some um, real use cases for that. Um, hopefully I'm right on time. So what I see is going forward is that metaverse is going to have big major challenges. And, and these are the four buckets I put it there. And I know both by Dr. J and uh, Dr. Alex, you already covered those, but biggest challenge is going to be the amount of data. The, we are creating so much data already uh, and now metaverse is actually because now all objects are 3D, not 2D, or not just, you know, the digits. It's going to even create so much amount of data. So that's going to be a big problem. Now, in, in, in virtual world, in digital uh, currency world, it's really easy to hack systems. It's easy to steal things because everything is digital and it's right there. So we cannot disconnect. So security is going to be a major concern. Not only just uh, stealing you know, fraud in the money or currency, but also um, some people are going to steal identities. So if I'm a mayor in a city, somebody can probably hack in and steal my identity and become mayor and change the rules and law. So that could be a big major problem coming in time. So that's where cybersecurity is going to play a major role. Um, and then, as we said, the effect on, you know, Social media on children, we have already seen effects. There's already proof. And I can see in my household, I have a teenager when they, our kids, when they're in the home, they're stuck in the phone. They don't know how to speak. They don't know how to communicate. Uh, they're sitting on the same table talking, but they're texting each other what they're trying to really talking about rather than speaking. So to me, that's a big problem. Um, I don't know how to solve that, but you, I can also tell my son, don't do that because everybody else is doing that. So it's really, um, it's really difficult. So that's a big challenge. So mental and physical health, and those are big issues. And that's why I really, I like this idea of mentality here, this, this conference is because I, to me, the physical health and mental health are two major issues in these world we are building, they're great. Their innovations are there, that's great, they're helping. But on other side, they're also not helping. So we need to, as a, as a, as entrepreneurs, as creators, as uh, founders, and uh, uh, all these educators, we have to make sure that we need to at least advocate or at least voice our these these uh, you know problems and talk about those. Otherwise, we are just going to. I'm, I don't think we can stop this. Let's just face that. <laughs> it's just coming too fast, and it's just being adapted too fast. Um, but at least we can educate our society in that there are these side effects and how we can tackle that. What can we do? So companies, you know, it can be Facebook, Microsoft, Google, I'm not calling any company, but when these companies and product creators are creating these new ideas and bring them to life, um, I wish they think of this before anything else, rather than focusing on money, like how do we make more money? How do we, oh, how do we make our platform so more and more people are stuck around and keep playing these games and keep, you know, addicting and give them reward and all that. That's great. But end of the day, that's not good. In, in my book, you are not a good company. That's why I, you know, if and I, I challenge them direct that I don't care how much money you're making. If it's not helping humanity in our race, 
to me, it's a bad company. Um, so that's, these are my thoughts on that. And these are some of the challenges. And this is my last slide here before I shut up. Uh, we are social as human, right? Uh, if you look at the, you know, our uh, humans are only happy when they are in, 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 in with other people, we are there with friends. And there's a lot of research is done that you are most happy when you are with your real true friends. You're, sure, you can be happy when you are making a lot of money. You can be happy when you are, you know, in, in doing some in, in watching movies or entertainment. But true happiness is when you are with your real friends, talking real things, not worried about anything else. That's where true happiness is. So as a social human, we are social animal. We need society. We need real. So that's something my view is. And all these, we are building this metaverse, which is great. But end of the day, there are side effects. So uh, we have to build anything we build. We have to build with a purpose. And I think Dr. J, you already mentioned our our first call. Anything you do with a purpose. And but that's why I know you. We anything we talk, always talk. Money is probably the last thing we talk about. Uh, well, our first goal is the purpose, the growth, and that's what even my you know, concept on C sharp corner is that uh, we build this big community, but we're always talking about the purpose and the growth and anything you're building, sure, learn new technologies, but let's think about when you build, because you are a creator of something, how is it going to help the next generation? And fake identities are definitely not a solution for that. And children are seeds of our future. So we want to make sure they get the right message. And that's my last message. But with that, I will shut up and thank you so much for having me on the panel and in this uh, conference. That has Chan, a thousand thanks. Um, for all of the c Shark Corner people, all 29 million, go to mentality.biz. There is a uh, free uh, session for c Shark Corner and all that attend this conference on mentality.biz. It's called aggressive actions for success. Okay, oh, that's great. We, we can, uh, if you could also share that, we will also yes, I mean, push uh, out I, to that. That's, that's Dr. great. Alex, would you do that at your convenience for us, please? Um, In and, and Mahesh, uh, we would, would like to make a few uh, observations uh, on your prophecy. Uh, you've been doing this for a while, you understand this much more deeper than everybody else does. You built this platform for C Sharp Corner where C-sharp, JavaScript, uh, these are some languages that are at the very top of 3D programming unity and these components. Um, and because you have a community, a, a very large community of developers thinking about how to uh, get into the metaverse, how to build on the metaverse, how to use the uh, OpenXR and all the Microsoft SDKs and Facebook SDKs and um, you know HTC SDKs. So when you look at it from that perspective, from a developer perspective, what are the new skill sets uh, that we may need? So let me quickly show you. Uh, this is your own creation, so you're watching your own creation in the screen. So let me just put it out there. Um, so. It, it, this is your HoloLens presentation. We were very impressed. And this is mixed reality. And thank you for doing something like this that, that the industry needs. It's complex, mixed reality, uh, like the Toyota Prius, a hybrid between AR and VR and doing complex operations in a very elegant and easy way. So now this is good from the consumer of that technology, but from a developer perspective, the user interface, the programming language, the design semantics, those all have to change. So what do you think is the, the skill set from a technical perspective that uh, that we need uh, for, for for this metaverse blockchain NFT. It seems like 
there's a layers and layers of technology. This is not as simple as uh, running CSS, HTML, and 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 putting up a website. So what happened? Do we need an AI assisted system? Do we need a no code solution? Can you give us some insight on sure. the poor developers? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah, so it's not as hard as you would think. It's really simple. Um, so if you are a C sharp developer, .NET developer, and now you can also do, and it's a Microsoft has a technology called UWP, and now they're just calling it. They are rechanging the name. But if you know C sharp and .NET, and you know how to build Windows applications, um, and that's where my background was. I was building those uh, client applications. I can lit use exactly same coding. It's not extra coding. And then you learn extra um, SDKs for the holograms and creation of those. Um, and Unity provides all the assets and you can create, obviously designers can create more new assets as well. And that's where the challenge comes in, the creating those assets, the digital images or the, or the you know, ideas, or that's the big challenge. But from programming perspective, uh, for holographic computing, if you know C -sharp .NET, that's all really you need. And any C -sharp .NET developer can learn that very quickly. The, the one of the challenge comes to, again is back to the design and creation. So designers are in a big need. So anybody who's a designer, they want to learn this new design that's probably a big future coming in. But other there's all, you know, Microsoft and other companies, they're all now working together. So you can even use different languages now to build the same, same applications. So any software developer, uh, even you can, you know, there's platforms you can develop in, you can even have interop using different languages. So if you're working outside of C-sharp in HTML and you want to build that, you can call the SDKs and library in there as well. So, yeah, so it's not really hard. It's not that, it's not that yeah. so, big thing, yeah. So what do you think of this play of real, virtual and uh, artificial? How does, from a developer perspective with this low code, no code, do you think augmented programming, looking at the world and somehow blending in the virtual world and AI, we can auto-generate code that the developers can use a 3D model. What is your take on the future of uh, programming in the sense uh, for, uh, we need graphic designers, 3D modelers, yeah. engineers. Is there a way that the systems can learn some of those components and programmers can connect the dots? Go ahead, your thoughts. Yeah, so yeah, yeah yes and no. Um, so first thing is uh, the reason we need the low code, no code platforms now is because the, the demand of coding is so much. The demand of software is so much, we don't have enough developers. Um, and they're not develop, they're not learning fast because as you know, you mentioned earlier that the hardware innovation is happening so fast, even hardware is behind, but hardware is happening faster than software. Software always comes after, right? For some, we make hardware and then we figure out how to run that hardware. So with that, it's being so fast lately that we don't have enough time to learn and build new software that fast. So low code, no code is going to help obviously. Um, but it's not going to be the solution. We, the way we are building things like they all will work together. AI is sure there's gonna be there. They can help create some code. They can have some re reuse some of the modules. Uh, that's gonna grow, but then there is again going to be these new technologies coming out. Now it will be the quantum computer. And so now somebody will be writing real code in quantum computing because no code, no code can do the website. They can do some models, they can do some designs but then there's new creations that are going to become. So we can never say 100% that, oh, the AI can write code for us and we don't need software developers. That just will never happen. It's like, you know, I, I grew up in India as a farmer and in, I think in 80, 1984, I was 10 years old. And what a prime minister said, oh, we don't want computers because it's gonna take all the farm jobs. So, the point is the jobs will always be there that it just shift the there's new technology always coming up. And thank you for making that observation, uh, Dr. Jay. Note to point the prophecy that uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Mahesh made is that hardware comes first and then we write software. And, and 
in the metaverse world, for some reason, uh, Mr. Mahesh, we think the idea of it just got a little further ahead before the hardware is ready. Uh, what what uh, is your take on that? Do developers need to focus on waiting for the hardware? Do they start building their skills now? Uh, wh what is your take on that? And how does no, that I mean, from an enterprise? I mean, thing? so software is not ahead. The idea is ahead. The idea is always ahead. We have the idea of metaverse, but we don't have the metaverse right now. We are still building it, right? So the the we have holograms, we have hololens, we have the hardware is there, but now we are building the software. Software is not there yet. Um, the idea is there, the concept is there. Um, so sometimes they work together, depends on if company decide, let's say some company goes ahead and start innovating software before, then hard will come later, yes. To me, that's, that's kind of, um, is some, you know, that's kind of mix. So- Thank you. Yeah, and thank you. I know we don't have much time, but we <laughs> like your uh, idea about children and the metaverse and confusing reality and virtuality and essentially getting the, ch the children need the real world interaction, the physics, the biology, the chemistry, uh, and trying to get, uh, you know, have some type of an age restriction for uh, children to get on the metaverse is something that uh, we would also take to point that you mentioned in your presentation. We yield back to Dr. J and Dr. Barath for the closing remarks and a wonderful presentation. And thank you for, uh, you don't know how many, many, many times I have been to C Sharp Corner to pick up a snippet of code. So it in itself is a metaverse. And thank you for uh, putting that uh, community together. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, Mahesh is a, is a great, great, great um, discourse. And truly, uh, we have an example uh, that's probably very, very ubiquitous with um, James Cameron and the, and the movie The Avatar. He has four or five movies set to release. Uh, concepts are there, but the technology is yet to catch up. So again, it started with the mental, and then it has to uh, be manifested with hardware and software. Um, I also wanted to comment where, uh, you know, just again, layer cake it up, as you said about the children, it's not a, again, it's a, it's a mental effect that these things have on them. With, uh, with exposure to a lot of aggression, be it in a video game or in a metaverse, this externalizes itself in their social uh, interactions. And therefore, it's a restriction that enables them to continue to construct the mind as opposed to destruct the mind in a way that Sometimes it's subtle because they have a lens on or they're in front of a computer and from the outside, they appear to be normal. But again, the mind, you know, there's a lot going on and we want it to be constructive, very much so. And also, where do we start? Where, um, uh, with the metaverse and uh, making sure that we're able to impact in a positive way, in a noteworthy way, we start with, uh, everybody taking a position, we expressed leaderless. Uh, so everyone's responsible for everything that's going on. And we want to take the responsibility as we're a part of everyone to make sure that we lay some uh, principles uh, and ethics down uh, to go by to make it a safe place for everybody. They said there'll be thieves there, you can learn from the thieves, but there'll be thieves there, there'll be uh, Identity, there's, there's protocols, uh, Dr. Barad and, and Mahesh, to maintain uh, the security of individual identity, just like we have fingerprints here in the real world. These things, uh, some folks can, don't even know they're happening. Some folks sit around and watch them happen, and other people make them happen. We'd like to be a part of the latter. And until uh, the things that are manifested for the software and the hardware, we continue to do the work of the mental, of the mentality where the metaverse is concerned. So when the hardware and the software is ready, uh, the mental is already ready and doesn't have to get ready. And uh, it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Whatever we can do, we are here to continue to grow. We have a newsletter out and um, uh, you know, we hats off to C, C Sharp Corner 
uh, and and to you, Mahesh, and whatever we can do, we're here. And please, uh, Dr. Alexander, if we can get something for everyone can see how to get to um, mentality.biz, mental strengthening, and then to action, aggressive actions for success. It's a, it's a free session uh, for mentality uh, for everyone that's joining. And it's just our way to say thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank that's, you, Mahesh. That's awesome. I have a awesome. section in the metaverse, uh, Mahesh, in C Sharp Corner. Are you planning to have a section uh, in the metaverse for uh, C Sharp uh, Metaverse? Do you have uh, plans to have so, a section? So, the, the technology of metaverse is UWP. So, we definitely have a section on that. It says how to build a hologram, you know, HoloLens apps and all that. Yes. But we plan to add uh, metaverse as well. Thank you. So, so far, like we, everybody talked about, you know, mental, uh, especially the metaverse, digital. So there is a one side effect of digital and metaverse, huge side effect I see is a cyber syndrome. And here is the Linda, I think she, she is the expert uh, in bringing happiness. And uh, she, is, she is a pioneer of, uh, and she is the, the best uh, book, the author of best, uh, international book uh, seller and uh, she will going to talk about happiness which we are missing the cyber syndrome which will, i think it which will bring this a uh, mentality metaverse or just uh, any like any digital still we are facing but it, what happens when we are in the metaverse right it will be exponentially growing and we need people which can bring happiness so i think uh, it's, it's time to uh, Linda to introduce, I think uh, she will tell more. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Linda, for joining this. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the beautiful intro introduction and thank you for having me. Um, so I just like to say one quick word that I just feel so touched with the last speaker, Mahash, how um, he just reminded everybody it's not just all about money, uh, it's all about humanity and I am so touched. I'm so touched. And anybody who knows me <laughs> knows that I have surplus of emotions and I get touched very easily. <laughs> so do pardon me if I do um, <laughs> if I if I do sound a bit too much for the IT world. <laughs> I come from the extreme opposite to your world. I'm all about emotions. <laughs> and and you're all about technical. So so it's it, it's just it's beautiful for me to be here. I cannot express my gratitude because when I hear that everyone is at the forefront here at the pre, almost like the pre-designing stage and, and to be able to be here to add my little, little, <laughs> little uh, voice, um, it would be so amazing because then everybody will be able to hear the well-rounded view, you know, not just the expert from IT or from the physicians or the medical, but also from, from everyday, everyday person, that's what is going to make it all relatable. That's what's going to make it um, able to, to um, you know, launch to the mass that everyone can use because that's the ideal world, isn't it? The idea is that we launch it so that everyone is connected. And, and that's what I hear, right? That's what I hear from, from everybody is that we wanna make it accessible. We wanna make it leaderless, you know, for everybody. So therefore it is so, so amazing that we're able to share everyone's view. So I wanna say a deep, deep, deep gratitude for that. And, um, I just feel like everyone is sharing, sharing like the deep, deep talk. Now, shall I, shall I still share a bit of my, my, my story or shall I just go into the metaverse? <laughs> I'll go by with your guidance. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about us so we know, like everybody know. I know, but I hope okay, this team sure, also sure. know. Thank you. Thank you for the, for the invitation to share. So, um, first of all, um, Greetings from Sydney, Australia. I'm all the way from Sydney, <laughs> the place where the koalas are always eating and sleeping. <laughs> to me, is the happiest place to be. <laughs> and it suits my quote. My quote is, happiness is another form of wealth. It's the most treasured form of wealth. And so this is what I want everybody to bear in mind when you create something so amazing. 
because you know like Mahesha it is it doesn't matter if, if there's a lot of money right if, if we're not keeping everyone's heart together if everyone's not happy there's no point so I just I just love to share that with everybody and and my next thing is that I leave this I leave this quote that follow your heart and follow your dreams and I just want to congratulate everybody for creating this amazing dream for the whole universe. It is so, so amazing. Um, this little poster is, is some a project that I've been involved recently that I've shared with Dr. Barat literally just this morning. <laughs> um, I've been invited to be featured as one of the special guests in this uh, documentary. And it has won 11 laurels so it's just so so amazing and I just want to congratulate everybody want to do good work for the world this is to pro protect the children's um on the cyberspace so it's so relevant so relevant to this forum and that's why I just want to share that and when I heard uh, Clayton um said that exposure is what gives extra access and opportunity that's what encourages me to share my story and <laughs> And really, it really, really um, speak to that in a minute. I'll show you uh, why and how. So in this little uh, time that I have with you, I just like to share with you my, my background story and a little touch of my view on education, on connection and happiness and setting an example of, of self-leadership on the metaverse. So thank you for this opportunity. So now I'm about to share with you the world's most embarrassing photo, okay? <laughs> so please forgive me, but you, you can laugh with me though, not at me. <laughs> so here we go. This is little Linda. <laughs> little Linda was born at the end of the Vietnam War. So I literally grew up in a black and white world. I've never seen color TV, never seen color photos. That's how I grew up. And I did not even know what a computer looked like. So for sure, I had no internet. I had no social media. And at the age of 15, I suddenly was teleported here in Sydney without a word of English. So I'm so grateful to be here to share with you my journey from, from a, like a dinosaur age, <laughs> my kids say it, <laughs> from a place where I didn't even have color TV, right, to color TV, to computer, to internet, to social media, and Zoom. Recently, I've been using Zoom. I thought I was really good. <laughs> and now we're going on to metaverse. <laughs> so I literally have gone through this whole journey of evolution in, in a sense, in terms of technology. So I wanna say thank you. Thank you for, for letting me share. And um, so it's been really, really amazing. So being born at the end of the Vietnam War, I had minimal education, minimal resources. And being the second last of 10 kids, I literally have, <laughs> yes, that's right, Dr. J. <laughs> I literally didn't have much, right? It was always hand-me-downs, yeah? And as a little girl, all I wanted, like any girl, is a beautiful dress. And that little seat planted in my head, had resulted that I became a wedding dress designer in Sydney in 2001 and had my own little boutique. And I also was featured in one of the um, Sydney uh, TV channels, Channel 9. Then as you know, I, uh, I grew up with black and white TV, right? I never seen color photos. At the age of seven, it was the first time I seen color photo. It was the first time I seen someone with blue, uh, blonde hair and blue eyes. I was like, what on earth is this? What is this world? <laughs> so literally every day I daydream about the world. What's America like? What's Australia like? Because I didn't even have a map, a globe model, right? There's no YouTube, no Facebook. <laughs> so that had planted another seed in my head. And eventually I traveled the world. I've been to Alaska uh, 23 years ago. And then at uh, the age of 10, at grade three, I was inspired by a teacher because as a little girl, I think many of you would relate to this. Uh, my kinder teacher holds a cane and I got so scared I didn't learn anything. So by grade three, I met a nice teacher and that inspired me to help others to learn as well. So I've been in different kinds of setting for, for uh, facilitation. Then when I came to Sydney at the age of 15, uh, back then, I didn't even have color pencils. 
The first time I was in art gallery, I was like, oh my goodness, what is this? So that was another seed planted in my head. And eventually I did a diploma in visual arts. So that's my first uh, participation in exhibitions. And so then I won awards. And in 2016, my self-portrait was the finalist for Women's Art Prize on the theme of equality. So I thought I actually followed my dreams, every single one of my early childhood dreams. Wouldn't it be amazing if I help others as well? And so that's when I become life coach. And so I won the local awards and I help all kinds of people, coaches, associate professors, uh, because I was always helping people all my life. It was just a matter of time um, that I would do that. But all the way along, this huge challenge. I was always told your English is terrible. Your grandma's is horrible. <laughs> so what did little Linda do? Linda, write a book. <laughs> so in 2017, I launched a book. Uh, the book is called Connection, the Currency to Happiness. Access your happiness right here, right now. It shares all the story, all about how to make things work when things don't work. And um, part of the process of the book donated to the charity, uh, School for Life Foundation, where they build schools for uh, children in Uganda. And I have amazing readers share stories. This is Christina, uh, Christine, who um, was in depression for eight, 10 years. It was by chance that she picked up my book and she was able to reconnect with herself, connect with other people and now rebuild herself as a trauma coach. And I have this amazing teacher who wanted to publish her book, but she didn't have the confidence. But after reading my book, hearing my story, when I came to Australia, when I word of English and I did it, uh, it gave her the confidence and she said, now publish three books and become the poet as well. And I was also nominated um, to be amongst the top authors in the magazine. And uh, it's my story that turned me into a speaker. I was really shy by nature. I barely talk when I was little. <laughs> so I go to schools. This is in San Diego in 2017 with people from uh, 32 countries, about 400 people, all social and entre entrepreneurs. So um, I get invited as panelists to different conferences and interviews. And as an extension of the book, I have built three hearts, created three hearts with the vision and mission to create a more connected society. And this is where I would love for it to be on metaverse, to have rooms in metaverse for everybody to connect. So Linda's mission in life is to be known for inspiring others to become more than what they thought they could be and to help them attain their ultimate happiness because happiness is another form of wealth. And I just uh, would love to um, show you what, what Barbara say. Let me just quickly share, uh, share the sound, okay? I'll just share it again. Three Hearts has challenged me to, to think and be um, more than I thought I was. So that's Barbara. Barbara is actually a glass artist and a teacher. She's 76 years old. She said all her life, you can tell her what to do, what to achieve, and she'll achieve it. But never once she learned about herself. At Three Hearts, give her the chance to do that. And so Three Hearts has created um, many amazing heartwarming stories. And uh, as I go about life, I saw this uh, quote from Tony Robbins, and this is what Metaverse is about too, right? We all creating, we all um, giving back. And so I just like to um, reiterate what Mahesh said earlier that you know, it doesn't matter if we just earn money, right? Connection is what keeps us alive. So what it would be amazing is that on Metaverse, we would have rooms for people to connect and not just to play games, not just for trading, not just for business, but with rooms for people to literally connect as if we're in person. Because when I first launched uh, Three Hearts, it was supposed to be in-person connection but when COVID hits, we bought it on, on Zoom 
And now we can go to the next level, go to metaverse. <laughs> because to um, the three hearts attendees for uh, Henry Cameron, who is also a nonprofit three hearts, a, a nonprofit non founder himself, he said three hearts is like an island of peace. And it's creative, it's fun, it's therapeutic, it's sacred space. It's a quality connection and that it's different that he couldn't find anywhere else in the world. And I just thought, wouldn't it be amazing if we cre can create that on Metaverse, anyone around the world can go and connect anytime they want at their convenience, at their time and space. And so this is uh, Professor Leif. He's the world-renowned professor, the first professor on intellectual capital. And he also um, really support Three Hearts and he become Three Hearts uh, advisor. So my question is that, you know, since, since in the metaverse, it's not exactly the real world, do, we, do people then get confused between the two worlds? How do we create it so that they can transition and still maintain that identity and not lose the identity, not having to have dual identity. Uh, like like uh, the last speaker, Mahesh said that, you know, when he's, when he's in the metaverse, well, he could be a mayor, but then in real life, you might not be. How do we address that so that we have the authenticity, you know, to carry through that we are the same person so that we, we can maintain that human authenticity so that we can still relay with each other with the same ID and not switching and be a completely different person. Because otherwise we will cause chaos in a lot of people's mind. Like, who are you? Which person are you? So that would be something that I would really, really uh, love to follow, to learn more, to, to, to continue to, um, yeah, that, that would be something that's very important to, to me and to a lot of people I would imagine is that carrying the same identity inside metaverse to the reality. And what if we was to use it to do teaching things like hand embroidery, a craft that is lost these days, right? So that the kids know, or anybody adult, know that you know the computer isn't just for the computer games, but we could extend it to art and craft because that's where we can maintain and elicit human connections. So, so far, the hand, the bionic hand can do the movement, right? You can do the touch, but the next level then is the feel, the actual, the actual connection feeling from person to person feeling. And so with, with the, with the um, connection room and the uh, embroidery, handcraft, things like that, how about for the seniors in the nursing home? Because I attend to the seniors in the nursing home sometimes. And sometimes you have palliative care, right? And those people can't go home. What if we were able to create the environment to replicate their home so that they can spend the last days of their life in their own environment? That would be amazing because especially during COVID, a lot of seniors can't go home and a lot of people, a lot of their relatives can't visit them. So how do we, how do we use metaverse so that we can connect them as if they were in person? So especially like the last few days of their life, if they could replicate, if we could replicate the environment like they at home so that they can pass away in the last few hours in their own home. That will be something I think it will be so amazing. Um, yeah, so uh, that's what I have so far. And um, I think the, the main thing is that when, when um, I saw the little girl play the balloon and can see herself inside, that's in another way that they can reconnect with themselves. And when we stay connected with themselves, that's most important so that you don't lose your identity altogether in the metaverse. So yeah, that's it for me. If you, uh, if anybody has any questions, let me know. L Linda, that is a master class. We <laughs> are impressed with your insight and your happiness and <laughs> your, your drive, your drive, like you just said, uh, 
you know, Linda, go and do things, right? You are a doer. You just go and do it. We, um, we feel the platform for you and the future is in the metaverse because now you can shape eight billion people's lives through the metaverse and, and the feeling and the happiness, I think, is, is a joy and a delight to listen to. And uh, uh, I would uh, yield to Dr. J to talk about uh, what you have said and kind of want to have a conversation with you. And we are so delighted that you came today and opened up the, the doors of happiness uh, in the metaverse for all of us. And I thank you so much for that. So, so, so Linda, um, thank you for being here. Um, you, speak to the, you speak to the heart of many of the things that I, uh, I impact. And um, it all starts, a lot of the uh, things that shape who we are in life starts as a child. So one, uh, one reflection that I made is that you, are you the youngest of 10 children? Second youngest. Second, <laughs> Second youngest. So there was a whole lot, of, whole lot of love going on. Yes, yes. I, I have all the bigger brothers and sisters protecting me. So that's that's beautiful. Yes. That's why the whole my whole um, first many years of childhood, I didn't need to speak much. So I was really shy. Really, exactly. really. Uh, it's a completely different world. You, so you have, have so I just thought it's, it's good on. for the viewers to hear from. Continue. Sorry, we have a bit of crossovers. <laughs> I'm sorry, continue, continue. Oh, no, 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 you go ahead, you go ahead. You had a lot to take from, uh, which enabled you to have a community, a community yes. that was very, very um, supportive, regardless of the other things that uh, might not have been there, black, you know, a, a color TV and things of the sort. Um, so this is a level of compensation that was made for you uh, for you to be who you are today. And, you know, and uh, it shows in how happy you are and how engaging you are with people because you engage with uh, nine other siblings from a young age and you continue to engage now as, as you go on. And um, that little child that we saw, she wanted to be happy. Now you're sharing that happiness with everybody, yes? Yes, and and I want to reiter reiterate that we are our stories. Our stories make us who we are, and exactly. so I want to be able to carry that through metaverse yes. to, to transition into metaverse. And how do we make it so that it's authentic, continue exactly. all the way through, so that so that anybody who uses it, not just children but even adults, don't get so confused that you know I'm one world here and one world there. And mixing the identity and, and losing the identity because it's so important because our identity is what make us who we are sure. and to me that's so important sure. that is so so important it's like when you when you create a robot you even give the robot a name right yes. you know that the robot develop personalities same as a pet right even any pet they have their name they have their personality sure. we need to keep our uniqueness yeah. We need to keep our uniqueness wherever we are, whatever we do. And sure. that's what's going to keep us all the human race as, as what we are. Because that's what we are, is that as a human, we all have our own uniqueness and yes. our own talents and identity. Exactly. And so that's my main message that I want to share today. Oh, no, I, I underscore <laughs> that because wherever we go, we take us with us. Yes, we can never yes. be anybody else, regardless of how we attempt to uh, put forth a representative. And I think um, Mentality Metaverse provides this type of primer for the metaverse to have individuals mentally prepared. So when the technology and the hardware of, uh, of a full metaverse comes into play, and just like uh, we reach a certain age of maturity and we go to college or whatever, we're ready to embark upon the metaverse with a uh, presence of mind, mentality, and, a, a, and direction. And uh, that is firmly planted on solid foundation. And Absolutely. That is, that is exactly what you're saying. Take yourself yeah. where, don't be someone else here or someone else there. 
And I feel that education is the way to begin to launch it to the public. Yes. We need to educate people before it's ready even. And this is exactly why I'm passionate to be here, right? We need to educate people so that everyone use it to serve us. Yes. Use it for its design good to exactly. serve us, to up-level humanity and exactly. not in the opposite way that could destruct us. That you get, you lose yourself within it. Exactly. So education will be the beginning, right? And that's exactly what we're doing now. And so I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to be here. Well, and so I really, I really, my God, we love it. <laughs> Browse. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so I, I really think for me personally, I'm passionate to launch it into education and senior care. Yes. Senior yes. care, because otherwise you will have the disconnectedness. You yes. have the disconnectedness from people who, the young people or the IT people or the, yes. the professional who use it, yes. but not the seniors or the, or, or the education. Because a lot of teachers already have enough troubles <laughs> to keep up with educate, uh, keep up with that technology, sure. and so therefore, if we if we don't consider them early, we will have the disconnectedness. Exactly. We will leave the, these two groups out, and so this is the two group that I like to remind everybody. Education must be seamless for both the learner and the teacher, and yes. the seniors yes. are the fastest growing group in in, in the world. So uh, they they can't be neglected. The seniors at all. Yeah, and I think absolutely. that you chose wisely with those two, you know, with those two uh, items. And also, uh, what, what is interesting is the journey uh, of fashion, design, <laughs> art, and craft, and uh, writing a, a book. Uh, the, all these could be brought together in a platform where you have your own uh, uh, ecosystem inside of the metaverse where you can connect every one of these. You have a community that does crafting, a fundraiser, yes. an event, and you just let it go. And you have a Linda digital twin in the metaverse. That, that was exactly, for you. and that was know, exactly. YouTube, yeah, YouTube is a digital twin. If we recorded your speech yesterday, replayed it today, it would be very similar that the interaction what we're having after your talk, that's going to be the, the, the one. But right before that, everything you did, you're probably doing this over and over. So if there is a way, and this is where real, virtual, and artificial comes into place. With the advent of artificial intelligence, a system can learn your mannerism, learn your style, learn, yes. then it can, it can interact with other real people in the metaverse. And so we, we are going to see virtual actors. So when you do these documentaries, yes. you're going to see like voice dubbing. See the, the, the film has already done a lot of this metaverse in the past. Yes. The different permutations, they put an actor, but the story writer is somebody else, right? And they have all these narrative. Now we're just kind of bringing everything into that one real thing, right? That, that, that yes. truth, that if you ask me the metaverse, is a case in point about truth. How to bring that authenticity, that's a, that's a beautiful word, uh, and bringing that truth to the metaverse. And, and that's a very important uh, part of uh, the authenticity is what is fake, what is real, whose perspective it is, what is your narrative. And uh, there was a speaker yesterday, we'll share that with you, who talked about filmmaking in the metaverse and it was very interesting. And now that you're going to be in one of those documentaries, we look forward to you incorporating metaverse in your life. And I think it'll just make everybody else very happy. Um, any questions for us from your perspective? Because you have so many different angles. And um, go ahead. So my, my two area that I would really love to be able to launch onto metaverse are not with my capacity because I'm not from IT <laughs> with all of your help. <laughs> One of it is um, embroidery. I teach hand embroidery at school to teach self-leadership. I just want to show you this picture, how engaged the children are. Uh, let me see. Can you see this? Can you see this photo yes. on the right hand side bottom? Go ahead. I, I yes. blocked their faces to protect their ID, but they were so engaged, right? 
And when, when, when people say, oh, embroidery is only for girls, you know, boys are not interested. It was so not true. The boys could not wait to start. The boys could not wait to start because it's something different, it's something exciting because I made it exciting. <laughs> but what it is, is that embroidery is more than what meets the eyes. It trains your personality, it trains your character, patience, persistence, grit, you know, pride, self-respect. So I use hand embroidery to teach self-leadership. And, and so this is the, the, the area that I'm passionate. The, the beginning stage of life and, yeah, and the end of life is where my passions are. Why? Because in between you can look after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning sure. stage is where they need help. I began as a parenting coach and I have expanded, expanded now I'm an executive coach. And end of stage of life, you also need help, right? So I volunteer all places, wherever they need me, I used to, uh, not now because I'm a little bit more busy. But, you know, what if we have rooms for meditation, right? Instead, so that, so that people don't get too busy in the metaverse, they get too excited, they forget, right? So what if we have meditation rooms, we have hand embroidery rooms, we have, we have art and craft, because I know that in a senior home, the carers are too busy to do activities with the seniors, right? This will provide happiness for them. I literally physically go to different centers to actually do it with them. Wouldn't it be amazing if I could do this worldwide with everybody, because I can't clone Linda, but I can do it in that way. <laughs> exactly. See, just to show us you, you're with us from Australia right now. Yeah, and, and, so, and so this is Three Hearts. Three Hearts also created really heartwarming stories. During COVID, the last two years, when, when COVID hits, you know how bad people need connection. And that's what we do. We literally, I created a platform with ambassadors around the world to help co-host the meetings. And literally we connect one heart at a time. And, and people has been so like, I, I could not even describe. I mean, it's not the mass number. It has never been the quantity that I focus is always the quality. But having said that, we do need, we do need the capacity in order to cater for all. Yes. And so that's why I'm, I'm passionate to, to share these. <laughs> Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, and, 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 you know, it, it's interesting that you brought craft. So we had surgery, surgeons. Yes. Uh, and, right. and, you know, if you think about it, uh, what Mahesh said was gaming and health. And yes, craft, that's right. craft is somewhere in between gaming and health because you yes. need the precision of a surgeon when you do some of yes. this craft work. Yeah. Um, and remember the balloon that uh, yes. my daughter was holding and there was a yes. horse on top of it. Uh, yes. I would like to show you one more uh, quick sure. uh, application that can, you may be able to think of a better way to do this. Let me show you real quick. And I okay. want to also ask you about the pop culture of yes. how episodes in Netflix, such as the Squid Games or some yeah. new culture is being introduced mm -hmm. to five, six billion people just yeah. like that. And then from that, there is applications coming up. They make a game in the, in the episode and then the people make a real game in the real world and the yeah. virtual game in, online. So there is a, yeah. you know, there's a reverse from TV outward. And uh, as Dr. Jay would tell you, one of her goals in the metaverse, I'll let Dr. Jay say he's taken out of the metaverse. Go ahead, how would you say that, Dr. Jay? And not to uh, be immersed and by extension consumed by the metaverse, yes. but have it as something that is as utilitarian as your refrigerator. Go in, take what you need and bring it back to the real world. Then use it then put it back in a safe place for further use at a future time. And, and that is important because if you think about it, we want to learn from the uh, metaverse, create in the metaverse, and take it out in the real world. There has to yes. be taking out the, the internet yeah. in that coming out. And the, the craft and arts you mentioned and how that re could relate to surgical procedures makes a lot of sense. Art yes. and craft can, can refine the tools 
that we yes. need further into the um, other. Yes. So let me show you this uh, real quick. Sure. Uh, yeah. And while you're loading that up, I'd just like to add that we want the, the children, in terms of children, in terms of teaching, we want, to, want, them, we want them to, well, at this point in time, this is what I'm thinking. I'm just thinking out loud, sharing my thoughts with you. I thought if they could see it as a classroom that they attend, then therefore it'd be easier for them to transition their mind back to reality and not get so confused. At least that's for the children, for the stu students anyway. And same as for the seniors, you know, that they are, they are doing a special activity and not being confused with the reality. And, yeah. and in, terms of, in terms of my black and white photos, that could really be, well, um, another way that we breach the generation gap. Exactly. Yes. We need to be able to tell them old time stories. You know how yes. we know we know a lot of people now forget the old values, the old the old way of life, which has a lot of wisdom. Sure. So that can bridge the generation. Be a bridge, definitely. Yeah. And, so and, there's a lot. There, and, and there's a lot right. of thoughts. Yeah. Sorry, you go. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just gonna say I, I did. I do have a lot of thoughts behind. it. But I didn't want to take too much time, and 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 <laughs> there's a lot more I can I can add and 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 share as time goes on. Okay, yeah. great. we can bridge cultural gap, generation gap, and yeah. technology gap, and and educational gap, all of that. Yes, exactly. Great, and I think your next book is in line, um, uh, <laughs> Linda. So Linda is going to write a book on the metaverse. Okay. Oh. <laughs> from from a non-tech view, how perfect is that? <laughs> Metaverse from a non-tech view. <laughs> but, 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 but you truly, understand it. Yeah. When when the doctors say that you can do operations, imagine this. Imagine I'm the patient and suddenly you're telling me about all these technology. I will get frightened. I'll be like, whoa, I don't know if I want to enter that room, right? But if we were able to articulate it in daily language and make it a daily thing, like I have, I have seniors during pandemic, over 70 years old, learning how to use Zoom because right. we make it a thing. We make it a thing. And so therefore there was no age gap. Anybody would use Zoom. And that's how I see metaverse. If we could make it that way, if we could make it, it's an everyday thing for everybody, then we have much more success. Then we have no technology divide. Otherwise, we will have technology divide. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, Pleasure. Linda, what we're yeah. thinking is in your craft, like you said, you want to do art and craft in the metaverse. Yes. So here is an example of the Squid Game um, episode in Netflix. From looking at the Squid Game, um, th this is an example of how you would have a, a cookie that's inside of your computer, right? Yes. And a person in a webcam is going to go ahead and use their, their finger to yes. draw. You see how you can see their hand. Yes, yes, yes. And look how they're trying to, the, the, in the squid game, this was an exercise that one had to cut out the star without breaking that, that, uh, that cookie. So here, this game is, is similar to that, where you have to trace the lines without, you know, shaking. If you do it, you lose the game. Yes. So now you're seeing precision crafting and training, and maybe, you know, this is just the very beginning, right? This is like point one of one, right? It's such a yes. very beginning. But you can see how you can make this three-dimensional, multi-dimensional, more uh, audience using it. So it becomes a very uh, seed cracked and then the, the player lost. So <laughs> from a technological perspective, the gap between um, gaming and health is art and craft. And that's a beautiful layer uh, yes, in the metaverse. Yes, and then yes. again, culture and elders and uh, uh, yeah. uh, using it every day. Those are all uh, very important for a wider adoption and yes, the absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, you definitely have the, the technology divide that, oh, it's only for the expert. Oh, it's only for so-and-so. And it's not for me. And people can't be bothered looking at it. Or they get they get overwhelmed and they've got shy away. They go, oh, no, it's not for me. Uh -huh. Right. And and so, yeah. So that that's why I thought it's really important that we make it as non-industry jargon, so-called, as possible to explain Excellent. it in, in everyday language. 
so that everyone feels more easy to adapt. And you are in the metaverse. Your background is in the metaverse. <laughs> it's, it's not what it is, right? It's different, but it enhances the experience. So this exactly. is metaverse point zero 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 one. But it yes, is. yes. Linda, thank you so much for being with us today and giving us of your time and allowing us to get a little bit of Australia, uh, because I see that it it wears well with you and your happiness. You know, uh, if you feel good, you're sharing that good feeling with everybody else, and you've done that here, and we thank you for that. So, our next speaker is Dr. Daniel Javier. Doctor of Optometry and uh, an owner of a private practice in Orange, New Jersey. He previously worked for North Community Health Center in East Orange, New Jersey, serving the community and as well as Plainfield Community Health Center. He is, by all accounts, a favorite son and pillar of uh, the New Jersey community. He worked as a specialty optometric eye care services uh, for a, a federal agency. He's a former member of the state of New Jersey Board of Optometry and past president of New Jersey Society of Optometric Physicians and also the past president of the National Optometric Association and served as a community health center committee of the American Optometric Association. He's authored and co authored several articles and lectures nationally and internationally on optometry, community health centers, and healthcare in general. And he serves as our chief medical officer here at Mentality and our other company that docks around the clock. Um, enough can't be said about um, this pillar in the community who um, he's a humble servant as well as a bright light all at the same time, uh, stirred up all together. Dr. D, how are you? Good afternoon, Jay. Good afternoon, Linda. Good afternoon, uh, the, the panel. <laughs> Thank you, Linda, for reminding me to unmute. <laughs> I was looking, I was about to start speaking. <laughs> we love your happiness. Uh, Linda just brings the, the happiness in everybody. So thank so you I for said, that. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Linda. See, you've done a good deal already. <laughs> well, good afternoon, everybody. Once again, uh, thank you, Jeff, for your kind uh, introduction. Uh, I also want to thank all the panelists. I believe I'm the last one, I think. So yes, I had sure. a chance to see quite a few besides Linda. You know, I had a chance to see uh, Mr. Banks, the first one on the first day, Mr. Rab, very yes. impressive young man. So the, the group really is uh, gelled, I think, uh, into quite a mixture, you could say, of professionals and it really came out as to how deeply people care about uh, their communities all around the world. So uh, that is fantastic. Uh, and Linda, you're also not the only non-technology person on this thing. <laughs> when you say virus to me, you know, you're talking about the COVID virus <laughs> and uh, other viruses uh, that exist, not the type that you have to call the IT people to come and clean your computer. Uh, to remove. <laughs> so uh, having said that, uh, again, uh, just as background, I know one of the questions that you had asked me, Doc, is, you know, to say a little bit about myself, just to put things in context. Again, I was a health commissioner in uh, East Orange, New Jersey, uh, from 92 to 96. And I was also a member of the Board of Education. So again, you put the two together from 94 to 2000. And uh, of course, uh, I was in charge of a budget as chair of the finance group of about $200 million. So you know, <laughs> I had a lot of friends and uh, 20 years <laughs> later, because I left the board in 2000. So you know, uh, the management uh, again was, was uh, you know, quite up to par. In fact, one of my associates on that particular board is currently Lieutenant Governor in the state of New Jersey. And she cares deeply about uh, 
you know, families, children in general. So that's really where it started for me as far as, uh, you know, being in the eye of the public. Uh, you know, jumping forward uh, again, right after the earthquake in Haiti, as you could tell from my accent, my beautiful accent, <laughs> <laughs> from uh, the great island of Haiti. And I went there quite a, quite often, you know, after the earthquake, again, on humanitarian type of um, services. I went with different NGOs, uh, the Haiti Mission Service, the Jewish Renaissance Foundation. Those are some of the few, you know, couple of groups that I went down with. I went uh, on my own as well. And those, during those times, again, we did a tremendous amount of uh, eye exams. Uh, you know, be patient with me, because the reason I'm going back is during that time, you know, I discovered something very interesting. Uh, during the earthquake, again, with folks that are familiar with earthquakes, people don't sleep inside buildings. They don't like that. They tend to sleep in tents and they put tents on top of beautiful houses. <laughs> they will not sleep inside because at any time you could have an aftershock. And next thing you know, you are buried under a tremendous amount of rubble. So uh, what had happened during one of those visits is during the night I got up to go to the bathroom and I saw a long line of about you know, 20 individuals and, you know, I said, what's going on? It's in the middle of the night. I'm talking about two o'clock in the morning. What happened was they only had one laptop that had access to the internet. And each person was, was taking a 10 minute turn in terms of reading emails, sending emails, you know. So a lot of those young men, and I'm talking about young people, they said, doc, doc, come on, come, come, come. You help us, you help us. You come here, you go to the front. I said, no, 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 no. I do want to read my email. I haven't had a chance to do that. I will wait online like everybody else. And when my turn comes, I will take my 10 minutes. But that particular day changed me because I said, you know what? If with one laptop, you have such collaboration. And, you know, again, during that one week that I spent there and I noticed how much interest there was for technology, access, information acquisition, so besides going back to do healthcare in terms of eye care and other types of healthcare, distribution of eyeglasses, medications, and I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in medication and uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in terms of uh, eyeglasses and so on. So I said, you know, why not go back and distribute some computers? Because those youngsters, sometimes the only thing holding them back could be just not having computers. Again, uh, Mr. Banks hit it home during that first presentation when he mentioned access, access to internet services to the point where they had to go around neighborhoods. And I'm talking about the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. Well, access again in Haiti, so that, that became a reality. So when I came back to the States, I met with some friends uh, in uh, New Jersey. So we decided, okay, so we're gonna get together and start bringing some computers. So we brought hundreds and hundreds of computers. When I say hundreds, I mean hundreds, uh, at least four or 500 computers or more. I'm talking about laptops, donated by uh, the Saddle River Rotary Club of New Jersey. I have to give them credit. A good friend of mine, Dr. Aversa, was again, a member of that group. So they had someone in the group connected with, uh, I believe the Micro Center in Patterson that put together these, these computers. So we donated a lot of computers. The way those computers went to Haiti was a friend of theirs had a mission in Haiti and had a private jet. So he used to carry the computers and I would meet them in Haiti and then distributed these computers to the different schools. So it wasn't in one spot. I'm talking about at least 20 different schools that received some of them 10, some of them 20 computers. And we also facilitated access to the internet 
via you know the the the, the provider in Haiti and Haiti has two major providers uh, one of them uh, is uh, Nextel uh, and uh, the other one is Digicel if I remember correctly so uh, so at least what we're doing really is planting a seed just like you guys are doing really with the metaverse and you know getting access those kids getting access uh, is important. So I concur with Mr. Banks doing his first presentation in terms of creating access. And that's that's in the foreign country. Uh, in the United States, of course, uh, issues with access to healthcare exposed by COVID. <laughs> uh, it became quite apparent again when suddenly you are a mother, you have to go to work, and you got a call that your kid's school has a positive case for COVID. Now, suddenly the kid has to go into quarantine, even though that's incorrectly used in this context, but let's use it this way anyway. Uh, the, the kid had to go into quarantine for a few days and you had to stay home. So suddenly you're not only a mom, you're also a teacher. Now, imagine if you don't have access to high-speed internet, and that's the case currently in urban areas and also in rural America, because I live in rural America and I practice in urban America, so <laughs> I get to taste both worlds. So, uh, again, usually uh, when you say urban is code word for Black neighborhoods, <laughs> and uh, rural, of course, is uh, usually you know, rural America, poor America, the, the, the poor side of America, even though, again, um, rural also can also mean underdeveloped. And again, Mr. Banks hit that quite on the money because he talked about Appalachia, uh -huh. and, you know, the access to the internet. So we're trying to bring all these things together, healthcare and the similarities and differences uh, uh, so those kids, again, in Haiti, access, now they have access. Uh, in rural America, like I know where I live, for example, I get at least 10 blackouts. So how good is, you know, the technology if you don't have the electricity to go with it? So we do have, uh, again, uh, uh, generators connected to the house. When the blackout comes, the generator kicks in and we have it. So all the talk about uh, infrastructure, uh, part of it, uh, Jay, Dr. Jay knows I'm very political <laughs> in that regard. And we do do um, you know a, a, a lot of outreach in terms of getting these broadbands to rural areas, broadbands to, to uh, the inner city. And, um, you know, uh, uh, electricity also is essential. So you could imagine right now, if there was a blackout where you are, do you actually have a generator like I do that would kick in and give us the electricity so we could maintain the access? So I'm sure Linda can uh, relate uh, to, uh, to some of those things. So uh, one of the... Um, questions that you mentioned again was, uh, you know, how well is the AI as far as eye care is concerned? Um, in eye care right now, especially as it relates to diabetes, for example, we have the technology available because I do consult. That's another thing that I do with one of the developers right now of uh, AI, where you come to my office, we do have the equipment. If you suffer with, with diabetes, whether it's early or late, because we know sooner or later with diabetes, you're going to need to have uh, some type of intervention uh, or very close monitoring of the inside of your eyes. So therefore, when you come in, we take a picture. And that picture you could send over the internet where in the past it used to be read 
by a group of uh, specialists that specialize in actually reading these things and can tell early uh, problems and recommend treatment. Well, that is slowly being passed on to artificial intelligence. <laughs> so that's one connection you could say as far as it relates to, uh, to eye care. And yes, I am uh, consulting with someone with that. Now, it would not be complete if I didn't explain to, uh, uh, again, I'm assuming, um, you know, besides the medical doctors on the panel or listening, uh, when you listen, when, when you hear about diabetes, you know, you think of high level sugar, but what is really happening at the level of the retina that makes it important or the level of the blood vessels is those blood vessels become very thin. Uh, you have areas of the cells called desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, those are, you know, uh, tight uh, junctions that prevent leakage. Well, when somebody is diabetic, because the walls of the blood vessels become so thin, if it's, the control is not very good, sooner or later they start to leak. And the leakage is what you would pick up in a picture. And sometimes it leaks fluid and later on as the problem becomes more complicated, it leaks blood. And that also is picked up by AI. So that technology, as we, talking currently, it exists. So the, that picture that you send uh, can be done by really any uh, doctor. Uh, so as soon as it's read, uh, again, a plan of action can be sent um, back to the provider so that the person can, uh, again, benefit the most from uh, the artificial intelligence. I don't know if there are any questions, but I just want to conclude so that I know we have to finish by four o'clock, so I won't be uh, uh, too much longer. But there are other aspects of technology, again, as it connects to healthcare. Another one is uh, one of the, uh, you could say, specialties that I have here in New Jersey is the treatment of glaucoma. Glaucoma very briefly is when your eye pressures is causing damage to the nerve on, in the back of your eyes called the optic nerve. And black patients, Afro-Caribbean patients, patients from Africa or African-Americans tend to have 10 times and, and also um, Mediterraneans as well. So people know Greeks, Italians, and so on. They do have the same traits as well. Uh, 10 times more than the average uh, population in terms of glaucoma presentation. So therefore, uh, as far as technology, there are contact lenses now uh, patients can put in that relay the information to the internet and can be followed in a particular lab. Uh, the patient also has uh, devices that they could take, you know, the eye pressure and measure the eye pressures with because that's, that's where you treat. And that also uh, can be transmitted over the internet. So again, there is some type of integration and it's uh, uh, important to mention that. Uh, one last uh, technology that I mentioned that's out there that's already being used is I have patients that are uh, legally blind. Legally blind mean, doesn't mean you can't see anything at all. Yes, that's part of it. But legally blind, for example, if you are at a residual stage of glaucoma, what you have is reduced vision where, yes, you could see right in front of you, but imagine people in your periphery, you can't see anything. So only in front of you. So those patients... Also patients that have macular degeneration, uh, that's also something that you don't, you don't have any control over. Uh, it just happens as you get older, you, you, you start losing uh, sight and you start losing vision. And also there are patients born with something called retinitis pigmentosa. Again, those patients are using something called an OrCam. The OrCam uh, really is like a pair of glasses they put on and then it speaks whatever language you could uh, program it to, uh, it recognizes faces. 
So you could be walking down the street and say, oh, Dr. J is coming. <laughs> or you know uh you the linda mentioned her the first chapter of a book uh you could program it and it's gonna read the chapter of that book for you so you again artificial intelligence paired with healthcare um you know providing services uh for patients i know google is working on some type of uh retina retinal device and brain uh, device. I know Apple has Apple glasses coming out. In fact, I saw a demonstration of it, but in French, where the Apple glasses, as they have it, and they're also working on a pair of contacts that does the same thing, works as a GPS. So you have it on, and then you know you just tap on the side of it, depending on what you need. It tells you, you know, if you're going from uh, Dr. Alexander Peter's house to Jay's house, turn right, turn left, you know, go up, downstairs, and so on. So it guides you as to where to go. Uh, so those technologies, again, being paired with uh, visually impaired people in order to benefit uh, uh, patients. So where I would like, again, some type of uh, future collaboration is really uh, to support Dr. Banks in terms of his presentation is access. So none of these mean anything if it's too expensive for you as a patient. None of these mean anything if you don't have the right band, broadband. None of these mean anything if you don't have the internet access when you actually need it, where you don't have to travel to a library or some type of mobile, you know, uh, access to the internet comes to your area because uh, the government recognized that you don't have the right broadband. So having said that, um, I think I could uh, stop there, Jay. I know we have 15 more minutes. We could answer sure. questions. We could sure. conclude. We could uh, talk more, you know, I could talk for a long time if I need to. So uh, again, I wanna thank um, the panel really uh, for a, a great job. I wanna thank um, the group uh, for putting this together. Uh, extremely impressive. I did send it to a lot of friends that uh, I'm sure are looking at it uh, on YouTube. Uh, Linda, it's a real pleasure meeting you. I enjoyed uh, uh, your presentation. And uh, again, I'm opening the floor to questions if anybody have it. So, so uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. De Riviere, thank you first for coming. Also, um, a, few of the app, a few of the applications you mentioned, I could visualize within the metaverse today. What's next? What's next for you where these things are concerned? Well, again, um, uh, as far as the, the next step, uh, which I've already started really, is, uh, as I mentioned, is, again, I, I, I looked at, uh, uh, at what was Ivan Rabb, the basketball yes. player, yes. Uh, young, young man. Yes. So the youth, the youth represent our future. Yes. So a lot of the work as a, as a doctor, uh, again, you guys as technologists, the way I put it, uh, you really have to find a way to pass it on to the next generation. And that's what I'm trying to do as far as next step is bring the next generation along as far as medicine. And not everybody's going to be a doctor. So therefore, if their interest lies in the realm of the invisible, okay, like the internet, uh, we talk about broadband. I'm sure none of you have seen a broadband. <laughs> I have seen a virus though, <laughs> under <laughs> high magnification, <laughs> you know, but those things are invisible, but they do exist. Uh, in my world, again, those are actually things that are palpable. Uh, in the IT world, they are measurable because I'm sure if you put some type of device, you can see signals uh, and so on. And I heard recently that uh, 5G interferes with plane taking off and all these things. So therefore the government is scratching their heads as to allowing 5G technology and so on. So yes, I'm trying to bring along as many young people uh, in my 
from my uh, uh, viewpoint, I think that would be the best thing for our future if the young people are brought along with the professionals. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. That's that's a you know to, in line with uh, with Linda education access some of the fundamentals uh, that pre internet internet now the metaverse uh, we're thinking more uh, ESG you know economic sustainable governance growth fair distribution a decentralized system policymakers are decentralized voting systems are decentralized. And case in point, blockchain and Bitcoin have, they're there for a reason, is for us to make sure that we go from centralized to distributed, mm -hmm. which is where we're, we're very distributed, to just that next level, which is decentralized and on the edge. So that when I used to work for Nextel Communications and they used to have these Nextel phones where two next cell phones can talk to each other at close proximity without a cell tower. Mm -hmm. So the, the decentralization of these technologies and offlining them so they can function without some other uh, parent controlling it, that is an important part of freedom and equality and justice. So to come up with a model, uh, to support the metaverse and make sure that it is not influenced, de-branding, de-biasing, and making sure that it's kind of open to everybody. So that's one of our biggest missions is to make sure that it stays that way. And uh, this, to your point, as a, we are seeing eight out of 10, 12 presenters are either in the neurosurgery or in the, in the medical field, especially in, in vision because the metaverse is taking real and making it virtual, confusing the eye and the imagination has a big part in it. And also the, the vision, because now everyone was focusing on the hand and the screen, touch screen and hand was what we've been doing with the mobile phones, right? And the input was received through the eye, but the interaction was done through, through a screen and hand. Now we're trying to connect it. We're trying to make the content close to the eye, reflecting in the eye or directly going into the brain or maybe through audio to touch, to feel. So we're going to have less stress on the eye, hopefully, so that we can have a multi-sensory, uh, like craft and art. We're going to move into that multi-sensory system. But my question to you is what is the health? You know, there's always some side effect. Mm -hmm. Having these devices and me constantly consuming this content through our eyes, um, how, what, is, what are the health implications of we being in the metaverse? Uh, is it going to, do we need some extra care for our eye? Do we need to have exercise for our eye in a different way? Or the neuroplasticity of the, the brain would adapt to those changes? That's one question. The other part of that question is visualization is one thing and imagination is another. The mind's eye, right? Going back and reconstructing a, a virtual world and then going back and, and seeing it in the real world and the balance imbalance in our, um, you know, in our years and, and you know, at ENT, these all play a big role when we go into this virtual world and come back to the real world. And for seniors and young children who should and should not be in this platform and for folks like Alzheimer's, and in dementia, do you think AI or some of these auxiliary systems can, can be an assistant to them? And self-driving cars, you would be 90, 100, and you would be able to drive. That's going to happen in your lifetime. So we're seeing a lot of progress in different areas, but the eye, the focus on making devices that the eye can see, is that the right approach? We have ears, we have touch, we have imagination. We... I'm trying to put together and say, we can't have 90% of the content injected from through our eyes. That, that, I'm not sure if that is how we're built like that. 
Well, so that is, I, you know, that's my question for you. No, Thank that's you. a great question. I think you had three major questions uh, in that, um, in what you asked. You know, the first one is all this technology, does it affect your eyes? The answer is yes. In what way? It depends on the individual. It depends on the, what you would call health and eye hygiene of the individual and the ergonomics involved as well. So for example, uh, if you notice, most of us are looking probably down towards the screen, okay? Which would be the more natural way. Your back should be straight. So if you're straining, so to speak, sooner or later, you're going to have issues with your back, issues with your neck, issues with your shoulders. So yes, it does affect your health in general. Now, as far as your eyes are concerned, some patients are quite comfortable with a system called the accommodative system. And the patients that have two eyes, it's the convergence system. So those two systems are measurable and depending on the person's nutrition, depend, depending on the person's sleep pattern, rest pattern and so on. So they may or may not be able to function correctly. Some parents, you know, as you may know, they find out the hard way, like their children, you know, after a couple of hours, after a couple of minutes, you know, start rubbing and tearing and so on. As far as age is concerned, again, you know, there are certain things, just like we have gray hair as we go, you know, dryness of the eyes. In fact, uh, COVID exposed that where you have kids never before kids showing up burning mm. running eyes because they were spending so much time looking at the screen and not blinking properly and that caused their eyes to become dry and when it's dry the feeling is burning sometimes you feel a lot of sand in the eyes. So if that's happening to you, yes, there's treatment available. Yes, we could do things. Yes, it is a condition. It's not just dry eyes. It's a condition that requires treatment and it can be quite bad. Sometimes you start with eye drops. Sometimes you have to do surgical intervention. Sometimes you do procedures like plugs. Sometimes you even have to go uh, with uh, amniotic membrane on the eye itself in order to rejuvenate the cells. So yes, it does affect uh, patients. Now, as far as AI and you mentioned Alzheimer's and dementia and so on, uh, uh, there are some research going on as far as the music centers of the eyes, because sometimes they notice Alzheimer's patients sometimes remember musical notes, musics and so on. So therefore they go, you know, there are some research going through that route in terms of uh, using music to bring back some of the memories, but those are, you know, early uh, uh, stage type, uh, type research in terms of- Do you think that the metaverse would be something that will help them bring back their memory because it's much more multi-dimensional and- I do, I do. And um, uh, again, that's why these, some of these research are, are, are very impressive. Uh, some of, again, the connections may have to be individualized, you know, where someone, depending on what country they're from, you know, like I know uh, certain types of music that I listen to is not the same type of music you listen to. But, but you, you bring a very valid point. The, the wellness of the eye has to be designed into the metaverse. So uh, the blinking and the, uh, the, the hygiene of the eye, the ergonomics, have to be built into the user interface of the metaverse. So it's- Yeah, the, the, eyes, self- the eyes and the body posture as well. Because yes. yeah. you know, again, your back can go very easily if, if you're not sitting properly. Absolutely. Your neck, you know, the arms, that's you know, typing all these things. Even we have voice activated uh, sure. technology sure. as well, but you could see you know where I'm going with this. It has to be the whole person. It has to be the whole body. Sure. 
Uh, that's and, very and important. Case to point, when we design the user interface for the web, we don't think about eye tracking, posture tracking, Not at uh, all. pose detection. Now that has to be built into the programming DNA of the metaverse. And very good point, absolutely. Dr. D. Very good point. That's Thank our you. point. And, and what happens is um, we have one minute left. And I think that's important. There was a lawsuit that was brought because uh, uh, too many children were hunched over their cell phones playing video games. But what we are doing here is um, case in point to what will be, uh, though we have one minute, we have two more uh, conferences coming up in February and also in May is now. Yeah. So what happens is that once your vision is treated, then you can see. Wow. No pun intended, but with <laughs> mentality metaverse, that's what we're doing here. So we can go uh, into the metaverse eyes wide open. And uh, on that note, I just want to again say there's a gift for everyone who attended at uh, mentality.biz. Go to mental strengthening once you get there. And the free session is aggressive actions for success. And there'll be more to follow. Uh, a thousand thanks to all 18 of our speakers and the millions of viewers from around the world. Linda, Dr. D, Dr. Alexander, it couldn't have been done without you. And uh, we'll come back for more in February. We'll have everything posted. All the best. Stay well, stay mental.